And hopefully that is working. Yeah, it looks okay. Uh oh, it looks like there's a lag. Is there a lag? Good evening, everyone. Mike here. Mike's unboxing reviews and how to. And it does appear that there is a little bit of a lag there. No lag? No lag? All right, okay. No lag, mate. How strange. Because if I won. Just looks like there is on the screen. Oh well, we are lagless. How bizarre. I didn't think that was going to be a thing. Sorry for the uh, lateness of the stream tonight. Hashtag blame Dave as per usual. Oh, dropping my microphone. Um, today's been one of those days. Well, actually it's been one of those weekends. Anything which had been sort of even remotely semi-planned has all gone a little bit pear-shaped, which was uh, a little bit of a nose. And it started off with me trying to sell a PC on Facebook Marketplace, which generally is probably not the best of ideas. And uh, three people all wanted the same PC. So basically I put them into kind of an order of priority and whoever basically didn't turn up, I would pass on to the next, to the next, etc., etc. And uh, the first person had a death in the family, so they couldn't pick it up. Uh, the next one didn't reply, and the last one was basically looked like it was a dead cert. They were very interested, went through lots and lots of things, and basically they said, no worries, uh, we'll come and get it tonight, which was last night. Uh, we'll be leaving shortly. We're about 40 to 50 minutes away. So, thought, okay, hold off, won't bother eating, wait for them to come, then we'll get some food after. About an hour and a half later, get a text message or me message on Messenger saying... Um, sorry, just leaving, um, I can't remember where it was now, somewhere in Wales, Caerphilly, uh, which is about an hour away, roughly, half an hour to an hour away, depending on how you drive. So, yeah, they just said, uh, leaving Caerphilly now, uh, be there, like, 45 minutes, etc. Is this okay? At which point, it's like, no, this is very much not okay. At which point on your way from wherever you live to get into us, which was supposed to take 40 to 50 minutes, did you decide to take a detour to frickin' Wales, go into another country, and didn't even think, or oh, maybe I should maybe message him and say, I'm gonna be running a little late, gotta make a detour. If they'd have done that, I think it would've been absolutely fine, but they didn't. And so I said, no, sorry, that is not convenient. It's too late. Uh, you're not gonna get here before like 10.30, which I feel is too late for be doing PC stuff. And uh, yeah, basically says, no, sorry, that's too late. And they replied, now, the funny thing is, the name and the profile picture on Facebook was that of a, what appeared to be a relatively youngish Chinese lady. And the reply that I got on the message was basically, after I said, no, it's too late, the message replied, top bloke, thumbs up. Now, call me old fashioned, but I don't know that many young Chinese ladies which would reply to a message saying, top bloke. That doesn't sound like something that I would do. Um, not sure. Sorry, Caf's doing some links for the videos because we're all very, very behind the schedule. As you're looking for the uh, Thermal Take AM5 kit. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's on Amazon yet. Oh, right. So you might have to put a TBC on that one. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so basically I'm getting very suspicious about this whole thing. Then they turned around and said, don't worry, I'll build one myself. And it's like, what can you do? Like, if you just said, look, I've got other things I've got to do, I'm making a detour, so I might be late, or just to give you like a, a friendly thing saying, look, I've had to go and pick something up, it's taking longer than usual, like, are we good? Obviously they knew what was going on, and you can tell roughly your time scale. But anyway, so regardless, the PC didn't sell. So I had a late night, wasted a load of time, was supposed to be doing a couple of videos, which I had basically the, the if then set up, ready to do a couple of videos. So now I'm two videos behind. I've still got a PC to sell. And yeah, it's a nightmare. Then to top things off today, me being me, um, one of our regulars, David Aitken, wanted to sell his graphics card and was looking to uh, downgrade a little bit. So I thought this is an ideal opportunity. It is an MSI card, which is the MSI Radeon RX 6900 XT, 16 gig, 
Gaming X Trio, sorry, Gaming Z Trio, which uh, you can now see filling up the Series 500 behind me, which looks, I feel personally, I think, actually if I open that up, just in case there's a little bit of reflection on it, I think this fills up the space considerably better and looks a lot more substantial. And clearly, when it comes to being able to video edit, the difference between an RTX 3060 Ti and a 6900 XT is going to be worlds apart. And the extra 8 gigs on top of the normal 8 gigs that the previous card had should make video editing considerably smoother. But in order to kind of work it all out and set it all up, I don't have a power supply in my main PC, which is capable of running that graphics card safely. So ended up stripping down the Series 500 a little bit, putting that bad boy in there. And yeah, I think it looks awesome. I am very much looking out for a, a certain person from Thermal Take UK to uh, furnish me with a vertical GPU cable. So this case has actually got a really cool feature where you can basically just turn the PCI Express slots around, but I don't have the uh, Gen 4 riser cable. So uh, Adam, if you're watching, I'll be tapping you up on Monday for one of those if you've got one, or if not, I'll have to buy one off of Amazon or something, wherever we can get one from. But I think in there, the uh, the triple fan is going to look awesome. Nice little bit of RGB on it as well, and it all ties in nicely with the rest of our MSI ecosystem. So very, very pleased. And actually, Dave did me a very good price on it, even though the cards new would go for somewhere in the region of about four figures. Um, we, yeah, we've basically done a mutually agreeable deal, which worked out very well for both of us. Neither one of us has lost out in any great way. I've taken a little bit of a hit on the graphics card, but that has to be expected these days. And being that the, uh, the RTX 3060 Ti Founders Edition is no longer available, not even being made by NVIDIA anymore, whether or not that makes it worth more or makes it worth less, I don't know. But regardless, anyway, Dave's happy, I'm happy. We've got a stonking great graphics card, which fills up that space. So it's kind of like a hashtag blame Dave and hashtag blame Thermaltake UK because they're the ones who started all this by supplying me with this amazing case, which has got so much room to maneuver. And that previous graphics card did look a little bit wasted in there. But it doesn't end there because Thermaltake have also sent over some other stuff for review, which has made me you had to upgrade to AM5. So I sold another PC previously in the week. So that has kind of partially gone towards funding my upgrade or side grade, however you want to look at it, between my current AM4 system, which is in there, which is what I use for streaming. And we've now got a AM5 setup. So we're going to be using the Ryzen 5 7600X, which is actually cheaper than the non-X version at the moment. So that made a lot of sense because if I want to have it run a little bit cooler, then all I have to do is just enable eco mode in the motherboard. And yeah, we could basically have it as a 7600 if we want to. So that is awesome. Um, motherboard wise, I've got the obviously MSI through and through. I've got the MSI Mag B650 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. This at the moment, arguably, now I hate to use the word value or budget, but I think budget doesn't appeal, appeal even to this particular board, but I think value does. So I'm touting this at the moment as being the best value for money B650 board on the market for its feature set. Now there are going to be cheaper boards for sure, but with the spec and features of this board, it's very, very hard to come close to this. The closest one in fact is the ASUS Tough Gaming B650, which basically is kind of never in stock anywhere. So this was a little bit cheaper and being MSI, I do feel like I've got a lot more faith in the MSI center for things like fan control and all that kind of good stuff. So that was the reasoning behind that. So we'll be doing an unboxing on that. We'll be taking a look at the processor as well. RAM wise, now this is a uh, one which has kind of made this all kick off, is the Thermaltake Tough Ram XG D5 or RGB D5. So this is a 32 gig kit running at 6,000 mega transfers per second. And this was sent over to review. And I said to uh, Thermaltake, said, um, you do realize I don't have an AM5 board at the moment. They're like, okay, so it's fine. Just, just take it out of the box, have a look at it and have a chat about the specs, etc. And I felt that that really wouldn't do it justice. So hence why we're doing the upgrade. And actually it makes a lot of sense as well because for our water cooler, which is in the case, the Thermaltake Tough Liquid 360 RGB, 
They've also come out with a new fitting kit. So this is for the LGA 1700 and the AM5 fitting kits. So this means that the water pump and the cooler, etc., can be transferred over from AM4 or LJ1200 to the newer socket types. So that is excellent. And also I do like the fact that this uses the clip retention mechanism on the new AM5 setups, very much like how Corsair do it. So that's a very nice and easy way of doing it. So very much looking forward to doing all that. Uh, we've got some other things to look at as well. There is the TC100 backpack, also from Thermaltake. Seems like it's been Thermaltake show at the moment. So we're taking that out. That is basically a water resistant, it's an IP44 rated rucksack basically which uh, can be attached to certain Bompton electric cycles and other, some of the non-electric cycles as well I believe but we'll be checking that out having a look at it as a backpack um, I'm not really sure how you would justify a backpack in terms of quality and all that kind of stuff so we'll be taking a look at things like the zips the packaging what it can hold um, it's also got this kind of weird reflective thing on there as well to make it a little bit safety uh, safety centric also some really nice padded straps, etc. So we might well try that on and uh, see how she goes. Also, being that this is the uh, MSI and Thermal Take show, good old ugly Bob has ordered himself a monitor, portable monitor. This is the Optics Mag 162V. So this is an IPS 15.6 inch screen, I believe, uh, running either USB type C or HDMI, micro HDMI. I'm not sure if it's got a display port. I'll have to check that out. Built-in speakers, all that kind of good stuff. So yeah, I was interested to see what this is like in the Bob in his kind ways that he normally is. Said you want me to send it to you first of all so you can do the unboxing, etc., and see what it's like. Now, in complete transparency, I have actually been looking to get one of these myself. So potentially, if we unbox it and we go through the motions and I think I like it, I might just buy another one for Bob and send it to him via Amazon rather than sending this one back. So we'll see how things go, see what this is like. That's the first Bob knows of that, by the way. Sorry, Bob. So that is the things that we're gonna be going through today, taking a look at all these bits and pieces, talking about our AM5 upgrade from AM4, obviously taking your tech chat and all that kind of stuff. And basically trying to have a breather. Now, also I should say, thank you all so much for the super chats we've had pre-stream uh, from uh, Nick Barnes, sent us 10 pounds via PayPal. Thank you very much for that, uh, very generous, not needed at all. Also, there was two pounds from, I'm going to have to find it out, two pounds from Ugly Bob with his usual disco, disco, disco. Oh, I didn't see that one. I'm not going to come up on mine. Yep, the disco, disco, pre-stream disco. And what else do we have? There was another one, I think, coming from Mick. Mick Woods. Thank you, Mick. Says, hi all, looking forward to the stream and the Peroni. Ho, ho. Peroni used to be, um, there's a local Italian restaurant near us, which is called Italb or Italbi. And they used to always do Peroni. And that used to be like a regular thing. You go in there, you have your pizza or your lasagna or whatever it is. And uh, be like uh, drinks, yeah, Peroni, get the Peronis in. But now they've gone over to uh, Moretti, is it? I think Moretti or Moretti? Moretti, Moretti or so, I'm not sure. But anyway, so we're, all, we're doing Moretti now. There was another super chat, I'm sure. I'll have another look. Where were we? Or was it just come in? Yeah, it's just come in. That's why the light's going off and making me blind. Uh, there we go, Bob with 10 pounds and his uh, top bloke. You forgot the thumbs up. That's the important bit. So if you're looking to buy uh, a PC from me and we're discussing things and messaging back and forward, if at some point you piss me off and you don't turn up or you're just ridiculously late, please make sure you reply top bloke. And actually, when this stream is done, please comment in the comments box below, top bloke, thumbs up. That will be appreciated. Or just hashtag Blaine Dave. You can put either one of those in the comments, whichever way I don't mind. Right, so I think that is us pretty much up to speed. I'm gonna have a drink, actually, because my throat is a little bit on the dry side. Uh, hopefully the microphone sounds okay. I've got my, uh, my mic unboxing polo shirt on this evening so um yeah i'm uh, the microphone's in a slightly different position so i'm not sure how it sounds uh, a letter says i need a book of british slang well the uh, the phrase top bloke can be taken in both ways so it can either be like if someone does you a good thing or helps you out or maybe helps you bump start your car or 
clear as snow from your driveway and they're cool, you'd be like, oh, nice one, top bloke. And you'd mean it sincerely and it would be a good thing. But if someone says, uh, oi, stop kicking out football against my wall and they turn around and go, yeah, top bloke. That is meant in a sarcastic way because you're not being a sar you're not being a top bloke, you're being an ass. So hopefully that um, that explains it. It probably doesn't. I'm not the best of explaining things, as you probably know if you've watched any of our unboxings and or tutorials. Right, let's say hello to some of you that are in the chat. Uh, where are we live chat? We're in live chat. It's actually weird. I'm trying to get used to this new graphics card, and I've noticed. Something immediate, the difference between going from NVIDIA to AMD is there's much more vibrancy in the colors. Now, even on my um, relatively old monitor here, which is an old Acer uh, 274, which we basically rescued from a skip. It's a 27 inch 1080p, I think it's a VA. I'm not sure what technology it is. But just looking at it, the colors are like pew, popping. Whereas before with the NVIDIA card, it was all a little bit subdued. Now I know obviously you can change those settings however you want to, but it does seem by default that the reds are a bit more punchy, uh, the yellows are definitely a little bit more vivid as well. Blues look uh, pretty good. Although I will say that I think the, um, the text looks a little bit more blurry, possibly. That might just be my eyes. Getting on, these things happen. Uh, but that screen definitely, that looks like it's uh, extremely, extremely vivid. I'm not too sure. What does the uh, the outputted image look like on the stream? It's hard for me to tell because Kath has got her screen calibrated over there. So it looks kind of washed out from what we're used to. Because if you have your screen calibrated, it basically looks awful. Anyone who's done screen calibration will know that what looks nice to look at isn't necessarily accurate. Which is a weird thing. That was our chat up line, yeah. What, what was it? Um, what is what nice? Feels, what feels nice to the touch may not be necessarily nice to the eye, I'll or something. Like that. That's so horrible. <laughs> oh, good. Evil. Um, Ari Wolfman says live equals red instead of pink. Oh, what the live logo down? Where is it? Here is it. It'll be on my, yes, down there, isn't it? So the live bit is now red rather than being pink. Awesome. Uh, Katharina Anna Hauserman says, used a 2211 one driver at the moment, not the newest one. Funnily enough, I actually did install the very latest driver, which I believe is uh, 2211 two. That's what we're currently running at the moment. So we'll see um, see what goes on there. Anyway, let's say hello to um, those of you that are in the chat, because I haven't said hello to you. And I do feel rather rude for that. And it looks like actually half of the chat has gone missing already. So if I miss anybody out, I do apologise. So we've got William Bodie with us. Same for me. So welcome to the stream, William. Uh, Catherine Anna Hauserman said, did you try the Fractal Pop Air? No, we... Um, there's... A company which deals with publicity and uh, media relations for both Fractal, Lian Li, and oh, what was the other company? Montec. It's all dealt with the same company. Um, they are predominantly have their offices based in China, stroke Taiwan. So. A lot of the companies which are doing um, distribution and stuff like that are basically having their kind of Chinese New Year shutdowns. We have been told that we may be able to get the Montec Air 2, I think it was, which people requested before, the blue color case, or is it the Sky? Wh whichever it was. So that potentially might be coming. Still waiting for some news on Lian Li and Fractal. So we'll see what happens there. But potentially it might do. Uh, Dutch Jan's with us. How are you doing, Dutch Jan? And Irie Wolfman. Really random reviews. How are you doing? Mark Point. Bless you for joining us. Can I interrupt this? Patrick LaBelle as well. How are you doing? Caf yes. Yoda, what GPU are you using in your main PC? Uh, main PC is RTX 3060 Ti. Maybe you should shut that before you bump into that. Oh yeah, I should do. Don't 
Did I interrupt your answer, sorry? No, that's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, 3060 Ti is in my main PC, which I call my main PC, which is my video editing PC, which is over to the side there. So potentially that graphics card might come out and go into there to help with editing, but we'll see how things go. Uh, there's a super chat coming in from Callum Young. Um, ah, that's who it came from. Just ordered my mics and boxing sticker for my new case. Hope you're both okay, Mike and Kath. Really enjoying these videos and streams. You're very welcome, Callum, and thanks for helping support the channel by buying stuff from our website. The stickers are actually pretty cool. You can probably notice they're, well, you probably can't see it now, because hashtag blame Dave, there's too big a graphics card in there, but there is a, a Mike's Unboxing sticker in the back of the case there, which was uh, provided by Ugly Bob, believe it or not. Thank you very much. And thank you for the super chat. Uh, Mark Point, I said that, I think. Uh, yeah, Patrick LaBelle. Patrick LaBelle, Patrick LaBelle. Patrick, did you send me the M.2 cooler from AliExpress? The Snowman M.2. I think it was, wasn't it, Kath? I think so, yeah. It was Patrick about yeah. Done the, I uh, I've done the video on that this week, actually. Done a review on that. And yeah, it is. He's got credit whether he sent it or not. Yeah, right? if you didn't send it, well done. You've got <laughs> the credit for it. But yeah, that's a very cool bit of kit. It, the way it all fixes together is amazing. M.2 coolers are a pain in the ass. Sometimes they've got stupid screws or maybe you've got like, weird little ledges. So you've got to kind of squeeze the drive in and you're terrified you're going to uh, break off some of the DRAM. Snowman have done a really, really great job of that. Very impressive. So yeah, the review uh, video that will be going out very shortly. Uh, Ugly Bob says value for money. Sometimes, not on not on here. We're not. Uh, Lucky Man says go MSI rule. Right on. Uh, Catherine says undervolt the CPU for more performance and less heat. Now, actually, something which I found out, which I was going to talk about when we do the unboxing, but we'll do it now. Uh, MSI have basically come out with a new feature in the BIOS, which is basically TDP overclocking. So rather than having to go into all these various different settings and mix and match stuff, there's basically an option of five different TDP settings. So you can choose your specific target TDP, and the processor will just overclock itself to the balls to get to that TDP and obviously overclock the processor beyond what it's meant to do. So if you've got the capacity on your system, it will just keep on pushing and pushing and pushing until it reaches that TDP. So if you've got like an open loop, then you could really give the processor hell. But also if you want to reduce things down, you can just flick the button, turn the TDP down to whatever your specified is. So 35 watts, I think it is 65 watts. I think there's a 90 watts as well. But we're going through that. We'll do a video on that when we go through that, but it's a new feature in the new BIOS is for the AGISA code 1.0.0.4. So most AM5 boards will not have that at present, but MSI boards with the latest BIOS will enable TDP overclocking. A typical male says, so it's like when ASUS asks which cooler you're using. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, I, I see, I understand what you mean. Very similar to that, but the... The guidelines are more kind of um, more strict, I guess, because if you with ASUS and even MSI, when you put in your system, especially on Intel, it says, uh, are you using the box cooler, an air cooler, or water cooler? And it gives you different PL1 limits. This is kind of similar sort of thing, but more with a, a view to overclocking rather than um, enforced limits, I guess. Anyway, we'll see that when uh, we come to test it. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, let us with us. Uh, as Bob was said, Mark Berry, ordinary dude, says you can't really go wrong with a Tom Holt board. That was kind of my feeling behind it. There are some weird quirks with it, but we'll, uh, we'll check those out later. We'll see if you think it's a, a weird thing, whether it's a deal breaker or not. Uh, Darren UK says uh, 219 pounds, prime free delivery, nice price. I think it is. It's not a nice price in general for motherboards, but we are at that weird time and place in PC computing where even if you look for a very a nice B550 motherboard, which as it's kind of coming towards the end of life for AM4, whether or not you'd be justified spending lots of money on a board is a tough one. 
And if you're looking at something like the, uh, the B550 Tomahawk, for instance, I'm sure at the moment that's going to be retailing for somewhere in the region of about 150 to 180 pounds. I haven't actually checked recently, but I'm sure it's going to be in that region. Although when it came out, it was about 150, 180. Then it dropped a little bit. Then everything, obviously, as things have gone on in the world, has got more expensive. So, yeah, motherboards are expensive. Whether you're looking for Intel sockets or whether you're looking for AMD, if you're looking at bargain basement boards at the very bottom end or micro ATX, then there are some bargains to be had, arguably. For instance, today, someone posted on our Discord, there was a Gigabyte, I think it was. Was it a Gigabyte? Yeah, I think it was a Gigabyte. The uh, B760, like a DS3H type board, micro ATX, 90 odd pounds. So under 100 pounds for a modern B760 board seems pretty good. It didn't have a particularly elaborate VRM, only two M.2 slots, uh, no coolers over the VRMs really, like a tiny slab of metal, a basic board. So you're looking at £100 for that, and it had a limited I.O. as well, a couple of USBs, only three-channel audio, kind of bargain basement stuff. If you want to look up and you want to take advantage of things like more M.2 slots, decent onboard audio, which is kind of edging in that direction, uh, also gigabit LAN, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth, all that kind of stuff, it all adds to the cost. And unfortunately, that is where we've got with the industry. So this Tomahawk board actually does cover all of those bases. So you've got Wi-Fi 6E, which is removable and replaceable with Wi-Fi 7 if you want to. Three M.2 slots, all PCI Express Gen 4 times 4 You've got Realtek uh, 2.5 gigabit LAN, which some people are going to say, ooh, Realtek LAN. But if anyone out there has used Intel's uh, 2.5 gig, you'll know it is horrible. It is absolutely buggy as all hell. The, uh, was it the i225 and the i226 versions, i226 is the new rev improved version, is actually worse than the previous one. And I've already sent back at least one motherboard with a dead Intel LAN chip, which was on ASUS board. So as far as Intel chipset goes for networking, not good at all. So you wanna try and avoid those if at all possible. Wi-Fi wise, not so bad but the LAN chips are hideous. Most people won't even notice it, but if you play any online games or you do anything which involves kind of um, constant connection, so streaming, gaming, sometimes video work, like streaming, you will notice it because there's something in there, there's a bug where it will just randomly disconnect and reconnect. And it's only a split second that it does it, but it keeps on doing it and there's no way to stop it. The only way you can stop it on the original Intel chipset, the i225, is basically downgrade it from 2.5 gig to uh, 1 gig. Whereas on the new version, they've taken that ability out. So even if you do get the breakouts, dropouts, whatever, you're stuck with it, which is hideous for a, a, like a 200 pound motherboard plus. Yes, Gav? Stuart asks, how do you feel about the fact that the board has no PCIe 5.0 support? Um, I'm not bothered. At the moment, there isn't any graphics cards on the market with PCI Express Gen 5 support. There's no real PCI Express Gen 5 M.2 drives, which are not kind of bowel shatteringly expensive. PCI Express Gen 4 times 16 still has a lot of room before it'll start getting saturated. So PCI Express Gen 5, it's on Intel boards, it's not really used. It's more of a, a marketing thing, I guess. Yes, it's nice that they've got their first in actually having it integrated in a lot of chips. But yeah, I'm, I'm not bothered at all. But then I'm not a high performance user in terms of graphics cards and M.2s. So I'm quite happy to go with the PCI Express Gen 3 M.2 drive. It makes very little difference to me personally. And to be honest with you, when it comes to graphics cards, most PCI Express Gen 3 times 16 cards Things like the old uh, GTX 1080 Ti's, that sort of stuff, still absolutely fly along. So I guess it depends what you're after. Yes, it would have been nice to have seen PCI Express Gen 5, but it just adds more and more complexity. 
you have to have additional layers on the motherboard to have decent enough signal in. You need more copper, and this just adds to the price. And there's no real justifiable benefit at present. Maybe in a year's time that'll be different, but for now, I don't think it makes a great deal of difference. Let me know what you think. Uh, I also want to say hello to Welly Bob's with us as well. Nick Barnes, Aletta, we've said. Uh, Aletta says, thanks to inflation, I don't have enough money to buy money. Just make it. Just make your own, the banks do. That's what we should all be doing, just making our own money. We should have our own mub currency. Where's my adjuster? There we go. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll print off our own money and we'll use that as currency. And we'll just buy and sell computer parts with each other. Cut the banks out of it. Uh, Paul Baker was with us. How are you doing, Paul? Mark Point says, love the Tomahawk, but I don't ha like the AM5 version. Doesn't come with a third heat sink for the NVMe. Uh, they have for Intel, though. Yeah, that was something, because I've obviously got the uh, B760 Tomahawk in my other rig. And it's very... It's weird actually how similar the boards are in lots of ways. It's almost like they've gone literally copy and paste and just taken out the chipset and swapped it over. Uh, Mookie MC, will this end up as Mike's editing machine, streaming machine, or something to sell? It will, the plan, well, yeah, the original plan was to put the AM5 setup in the streaming PC because currently it's got AM4 in it, which is starting to kind of go towards end of life. Also, there are a few companies which have been reaching out to us saying, do you want to have some DDR5 for testing? And I haven't had a DDR5 motherboard. So with the opportunity arising that I sold a PC, which give me the funds to then replace it, because obviously that's what we do. We get stuff in, send it back out, put the money back into the channel, get more stuff, and it's just a, a constant sausage factory of parts. And so, yeah, this made a lot of sense. So because it's gonna be primarily for uh, reviewing DDR5 stuff, I'm thinking it makes more sense for it to be in the PC behind me, because that is less mission critical, argu arguably, because it is just for streaming. Worst case scenario, I can stream from my editing PC. But the editing PC, if something goes wrong with that, I'm basically screwed because it puts me really, really far behind. If I can't edit videos, or there's footage on it, or whatever it is, it's just an absolute nightmare. Speaking of which, I did actually have a nightmare this week, and the video hasn't gone out yet, so I don't know whether I should mention it or not. Um, I'll throw somebody on the bus. So Rick H, God bless him, actually sent over the Thermalright uh, LGA 1700 plate, which is supposed to stop your boards from sagging and uh, bending, etc as we've seen, and I installed it, and the temperatures actually got worse, which I've never seen before. Everybody's always said either it stays exactly the same or it drops anything up to about 10 degrees, whereas for some bizarre reason, I was gaining 10 degrees. So we went from having a system which under Cinebench would hit somewhere in the region of about 75, 76 degrees, maybe 78 degrees, if it was pushing a little bit, to a, a point where it was almost hitting 90. So I was like, there's something really desperately wrong going on here. I don't know what is going on. Am I an idiot? Have I put it in wrong? What I can tell, well, my theory is that I have over tightened the screws because I was getting all kinds of weird instability. So the PC would basically just magically turn itself off or just hang. So literally you'd be using it in the middle of editing a video and suddenly, it would just freeze completely. Now this was a previously rock solid steady machine. The only thing I'd have changed was the actual uh, LGA 1700 bracket. So I went through doing loads of different testing, loads of different uh, things. The, there isn't really a manual that comes with the thermal right stuff. So it just says, do the screws up. So I just did them up and I did them up snugly. So I took it all apart numerous times, done various testing, loosened it off a little bit and Found that now it is stable, but the temperature still exist. So I then took off the thermal right mounting kit, put back on the standard LG 1700 retention bracket, redone all my testing, and the temperatures were the same. 
So I don't know what happened there. Whether there was a Windows update between me going to bed and waking up the next day, because I did some of the testing the night before, and then started the other work in the morning. But weirdly, for some reason, temperatures went up about 10 degrees on average, eight to 10 degrees. So I was really, really confused what the hell was going on. But definitely, if you are looking at LJ 1700 brackets, make sure you don't over tighten them. So I got it to the point. So when it starts to, when it bites at the end, like finishes, I then rolled it back just a tiny fraction on all four points and that seemed stable. But yeah, I was a little bit concerned with the crashing gun. I was like, oh God, I've killed the board. This is why we shouldn't have LGA 1700 or the AM5 sockets because motherboards now, we are basically introducing instability. Anytime you do anything with the motherboard, you've got to be so careful because those pins are ridiculously sensitive, like ridiculously so. so too much pressure on there. I can see all the people that have built AM5 or AM3 systems over the last 10 to 15 years. When they start going over to AM5 and also going to LJ1700, there are gonna be huge, huge amounts of people with dead motherboards, not booting, instability, and it's going to be so hard to diagnose it. It really is. Uh, Jukka back, sorry. Arali come in there with a super chat for £10. Thank you, Arali. Says Poppy. Bless her. Bless her heart. She is cute. Every home should have one. Yeah, so I'm definitely the, uh, the land grid array for pins on motherboards. I am dead, dead against. I would much rather have a socket like AM3, AM4. It's going to be a world of hurt. You're not going to get damaged processors anymore, but I would 100% guarantee there will be people that will mess up motherboards. 100%. And the fact that they are considerably more expensive, basically double the price of what they used to be, that's a huge chunk of money going to be thrown down the drain. And weirdly, I've got a B660 board, which was having issues with an Asus board, which has gone back to CCL and they've said the board's fine. So, I don't know. You use your arrow around every time. That was using the standard LGA bracket that comes with the board. So, I don't know. I'm waiting for that one to come back. I'm interested to see what's going to go on there. Right, moving on. Uh, Mark Point said, Mookie MC. Uh, Ordinary Dude says, does the backpack get the? I didn't get the end of that one, mate. Did the backpack get the? No. Uh, Rick H says, thank you, Thermal Take, for the goodies. Thanks, Adam. Bless your heart. He's a very nice man. Uh, really Random View says, a monitor in that box. Love that. It is, there is a monitor in that box, believe it or not. Uh, atypical males with us. Who came through said, Dutch Jan, it says 15.6 is too small. I've got a 14 inch laptop and I do agree. 14 inch is way too small. 15.6 I think is doable. 17 would be better. We'll see. Uh, Darren UK says the mag got great onboard audio, ALC 4080. That is exactly right, yeah. Audio for me is relatively important because obviously making YouTube videos is quite nice to be able to actually hear what is being recorded and get it reproduced in a relatively kind of clear way. So actually having slightly better audio is gonna be great. The ALC 4080 in terms of actual as an upgrade, it kind of isn't, it's more of a side grade. So it's basically the ALC uh, 1220 chipset, which was like the premium one for most motherboards, but it's been ported across from being PCI Express to being uh, USB. And also some of the tracks have been isolated more so. It's kind of a sideways move, although it does now support up to 384 bits, I believe. Whether that's a good thing or not, I don't know. We'll find out. Oh, Ordinary Dude says, does the backpack get the trust me bro warranty? Um, I'm not too sure. You'd have to take that with thermal take. Quite possibly. Trust me, bro. Yeah, I've forgotten all about that. 
Uh, ugly Bob, no. Uh, maybe not. Mookie says, good size for a secondary monitor. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of hoping. O'Reilly says, Uggs, was that a drunk ordering when you sent that portable uh, mag screen to Mike? God, this monitor, it seems a lot brighter actually. Or is this my eyes? Um, I should fast forward. Sky Stalker's with us, and Tina. How you doing, Sky and Tina? Hopefully you're doing well. Uh, Dutch Jam has said, Aletta, Ivory Wolfman, Digital Demonic Davros. How you doing? <laughs> I love that name. Oh, that is excellent. Uh, O'Reilly says, you sound perfect, Mike. Will you start karaoke session? Uh, no. I think that would uh, kill off the views straight away. Bandy says, blame Kerry Holzman. Let's blame Kerry for everything. Harry Wolfman says, top bloke equals feck off. Yes. It did seem to in that particular instance. Uh, Welly Bob says, I've always noticed AMD colours are more vibrant by default. I think I did, even back in the old, uh, the Rage 64, oh, sorry, it'll be Mac 64 or Rage 128 days. Even back then, they definitely were. Hugh Luttrell, how you doing, Hugh? Good to see you. Uh, Rick H says it looks fine. Let's fast forward a bit. Uh, David Andrew says my idea of a small monitor is 24 inch. Yep, that is what is running there. That is that monitor is so stupid, but it does make sense for what we're doing. I was talking to Dave about this today. That monitor is a 24 inch, but it's 4K. My 4K at 24 inch is just stupid because the scaling is just awful. You can't see a thing. Running something like uh, Unigine Heaven earlier. The box was so small, it's like I didn't even know where it was. I didn't know where to look. So, oh, there it is, right in the middle, tiny. I'm trying to click on anything is just ridiculous. But the reason why that is there is because a, it fits in where that is, and obviously you can't have anything too big out there. But because we record a lot of footage, or well, pretty much everything in 4K 30 hertz, I also record screen grabs on there at 4K 30 frames per second. So that way I can export my OBS recordings directly into the PC over there along with the camera footage, put them both on the timeline. They're both 4K, both uh, 30 frames per second. They kind of sync up almost magically perfect and it's at the right resolution. So I don't have to kind of stretch things too much. Obviously I do like to zoom in on stuff. Like if there's something that you need to click on in the uh, unboxings and reviews and stuff, I do zoom in, but it's nice that I'm recording it 4K. So I've already got that 4K image so I can zoom in. Whereas if you go with 1080p, then start zooming in, it looks awful. So that is the reason behind that monitor. There's no other reason. I, I don't like it, I really don't. But for the purpose intended, and actually saying that, the color on it now is fantastic. It's really popping. I don't even think it's IPS. I think it's, I think it's a VA panel. I'm not sure, but it, it looks awesome. Anyway, moving on. Benny Hill says, Mike, I installed uh, WGT Golf. Uh, could not even see the tip box without binoculars. Hey Daisy. Poppy, come out of Daisy's box. You want to come out, Daisy? <laughs> right. Okay, so that is, I think we're called up there, so let's have a look at some of these bits and pieces. Been going for nearly an hour. I do apologise if my nose is whistling as well. In some of the videos, I've noticed that my nose is whistling. I have had a sinus infection. And it's still, there's still, yeah, still a bit of a whistle going on. I can't do anything about it. It basically is what it is. If you don't like it, don't watch the videos. <laughs> there's nothing that I can do. It is what it is. I suppose arguably I could do it like that. No, that'd be worse. Right, let's have a look at this processor, because I haven't even opened this yet. I've, I've undone the seal at the top, but that is all I've done with it. So actually, let's do the, uh, the overhead shot. And is that visible? Yeah. Oh, actually, I better get rid of that off of there. And we could probably zoom in a bit, couldn't we? Uh, 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 uh. There we go. Zoom. Oh, now I've got to turn the other light on. Hey, Pops. Oh, I'm about to blow my nose. Is any... Oh, there's a blue roll. Luckily, blue, roll. blue ear, mate. Gonna need that blue roll. roll. 
Oh, Bob's sent us over some blue roll, so excuse me a moment while I blow my nose. Oh, nothing come out. Butterflies. <laughs> I did that actually on the stream. I just realised that. Oh well. You know what to expect here, sadly. Right, anyway, processor. So AMD Ryzen 5 7600X. Currently available in the United Kingdom for £248.46, I believe, from Amazon.co.uk. Also available in other places. This is probably about the best price. Whether or not it's good value for money, I don't know. It is basically, if you look at the specifications, it is six cores, 12 threads. So not, not a huge core count, but certainly it's not a four core, which would be horrendous. 5.3 gigahertz is the maximum boost and also 4.7 gigahertz is the base clock. You've got 38 megabytes of cache and it is an unlocked processor, unlike the, um, basically if you're putting it against anything at the moment from the uh, other side of the table, you'd be looking basically at that. So this is a similar sort of price at the moment, I think. So that's the i5-13500. LJ seventeen hundred. This has got twenty cores, so you've got six performance cores, which are hyper-threaded. Then you've also got the so that's giving you twelve. Then you've also got eight efficiency cores, so twenty cores in total, twelve fast cores, eight slow. This has got basically twelve cores or six cores hyper-threaded. So they're kind of the same thing. Very similar price. It does appear that actually benchmark wise, they're very similar, put it that way. So depending on which side you wanna go, Intel, you get some advantages, obviously for video editing with Premiere, etc. The onboard graphics, bizarrely, are slightly stronger on the Intel than they are on the AMD. And actually, if you look at the processors themselves, they both look very similar. This one comes with a cooler, this one doesn't. This CPU is locked, so no overclocking um, on most or almost all motherboards, no uh, B clock overclocking, so no overclocking the PCI Express bus. With the Ryzen, obviously, you do get it unlocked, so potentially there is room for improvement, overclocking, etc. etc. Arguably, either processor is excellent choice if you're building a new PC. Shut up. Uh, either is a great choice if you're building a new PC. If you've already got a system with something around the, maybe the Intel uh, 12400, you will see a slight increase in performance. If on the AMD side, you're rocking something like a 5800X or an older 3900X or 3800X, then it's gonna be very, very simple. So there you go. That is uh, where we're at. Price-wise, like I said, very, very similar indeed. So let's take a look inside and see what this is all about. I've not actually seen what one of these looks like, which you'd think by now I would have. So no included cooler. We get a certificate of authenticity. Nice. Get the processor itself. Let's slide that out there. I'm not sold on this idea of the... Um, the heat shield on the top having these indentations around the side that for me is going to be a nightmare to keep clean and also you've got a slightly sh smaller surface area for your thermal paste and if you use anything like liquid metal which you probably wouldn't on a cpu anyway getting it down the sides could be absolutely catastrophic now uh, we don't have to worry too much about pins on these because there's none so we've now gone over to this which is the lga or land grid array. So all of those tiny, tiny little um, golden dabs, dots, whatever you want to call them, they are, I can see actually there's, there's something on there already, a bit of dirt, or there is one, did something come off of there? So these are the only things which make contact with those tiny little pins. So this is a recipe for disaster already. Because if this isn't perfectly clean, 
just a little bit of grease on any one of those pads that, just that I've just rubbed could potentially be the difference between your processor working or one of those tiny connects not connecting to your graphics card, your RAM, your chipset. So although it may work, there may be stuff which is not working as intended. Catherine says I didn't like this. Catherine says there is a plastic to fill in the indentations made by Noctua. Ah, right, that's interesting. So, oh God, dropped it already. So at least I dropped it in this, uh, there's nothing physically there to damage or break in terms of pins, which I guess is somewhat of a blessing, but with the pin, you do have a lot more contact area. So when you actually put your processor in the motherboard with the pins grid array, you put it in and then when you push the lever down, you get a kind of like a slot coming across and touching the pins. Whereas with this, it's very, very, very flimsy. There's not a great deal. Well, there's no there's no margin of error. If something isn't contacted, that's it, you're knackered. I'm not looking forward to this generation. I really want them to go back to uh, PGA. Daisy, what are you doing? You didn't go in there. Where'd you go? your printer. So anyway, there you go. That is the, uh, the Ryzen 5 7600X. Similar processing power in terms of gaming to a 5800. Uh, 3900X and probably the 13500, 13600, those kinds of processors. So, there you go. Uh, dropped it doing a, yeah, doing a Linus. Seems strange seeing a wall to wall LGA, says Matthew Day. Very true. That is very, very true. Right, let's have a look at the RAM next. So this is from Thermaltake. This is their Tough RAM XG RGB D5. It's got 16 addressable LEDs. Although it doesn't say whether that's per strip or across the two. Looking at the color spread, I don't know. Hard to tell. But DDR5, so 6,000 mega transfers per second or megahertz per second, however you want to look at it. It's a two by 16 gig kit, 32 gigs in total. Lifetime limited warranty. So if you snap it, drop it, drain it, chances are it's not gonna be a warranty, but otherwise you should be all good. Supports TTRGB plus, the Alexa add-in as well for thermal take. Also the Neon Maker, which is actually very cool if you wanna make up your own RGB effects, very similar to what you can do in something like Signal RGB. On the back, serial numbers, etc., and some more information about it. So, um, yeah, 16 high lumen individually addressable LEDs, 10 layer PCB with two ounce copper foil plating for enhanced overclocking potential and stability. Meticulously engineered TT Premium heat spreaders, on die error correcting code or ECC. So that is actually something which is part of some of DDR5 specification is the fact that now we do actually have on die error correction. So for mission critical stuff, in theory, your code should not crash as much as it would previously, or at least it wouldn't crash hard. Uh, Intel XMP 3.0 ready, also supporting obviously the new overclocking for AM5 as well. Supports RGB plus, etc. as we said, and is compatible with both Intel and AMD. So let's take them out. This is to be the first time I've seen these. I did do a review on the, oh God, they're very cool on the, uh, the black version of these for TDR4 a little while back, which was the, um, the XG, I'm trying to think which one was that, it's the XG D4. Ooh, that is very nice. Fair play to Thermal Tape. They do know how to uh, execute a decent stick of RAM. Now, obviously it doesn't make any difference really in the grand scheme of things, what it actually looks like, it's what it performs like, which should also be very good. But you've got some nice textures on here and you've got a nice uh, mixture of different kind of textures and patterns and colors. So you've got the glossy plain white on this side, you've got a reflective section in the middle, and then you've got this kind of, almost like a Nvidia kind of uh, Finders Edition graphics card-ish metal on this side. And it gives you the X logo or X pattern 
hence the XG name in the RAM. Yeah, it looks very nice, very nice indeed. It does look very similar to DDR4 actually. The, um, yeah, very, very cool. I like that a lot. Oh, and there is a super chat come in from Stuart Cleary, 50 euros, Jesus. Stuart, that's very kind of you. Uh, Stuart says, towards the latest tech costs, PS, sound bloke. Sure you don't mean top bloke. <laughs> Thank you, that is extremely kind of you. And, uh, wow, there's another super chat coming in from Rick H. Sorry. Calf's, calf's dropped the ball there. I haven't, it's our son swearing upstairs. Yeah, George was swearing like crazy upstairs, hopefully he didn't hear that. Uh, there's a super chat also from Rick H as well, $20. Thank you so much, Rick. And he says, funds for the power bill. Yeah, I think I'm going to need it, especially with his new graphics card. Although it does make sense that it is in the streaming PC, because the streaming PC isn't on all day. It's only on when I'm doing some work or streaming or filming some kind of uh, B-rolls or whatever. And the graphics card is generally going to be idling. And Dave assures me, so if this is wrong, hashtag blame Dave, uh, he assures me that it idles very, very low at like seven watts or something, which can't argue with that. And hopefully the AM5 platform, it does appear to have some really good cost saving measures involved. So in theory, this should be a very efficient build when it's kind of doing its idling thing. Obviously when you put it under full load, there aren't that many systems which tend to be efficient from like all the way through the spectrum. So anyway, we'll see how it is. But thank you, Stuart. And thank you, Rick, so much for your super chats. Very, very cool. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go back to the overhead. So yeah, I think that is uh, pretty much it for the Tough Ram XG. I'm really looking forward to getting this all set up. I'm a little bit gutted because I didn't buy, I haven't bought Ram yet. This was actually sent to us for a review. So this actually has to go back. So I do need to actually purchase some Ram. Now, it doesn't appear that this is actually available to purchase anywhere at the moment in the UK. So I don't know whether I'm going to be able to actually buy any Thermaltake Tough Ram. And also, I would say, depending on the price, that may be a consideration why I may not actually buy it. I may just go with some cheap and cheerful um, Fury or some, I don't know, whatever, Crucial, some really old school stuff without even heat spreaders on, depending what funds are like. So we'll... We'll see what that is uh, what that is all about. But yeah, this does look very cool. And if it comes in at the right price, if it isn't that much more expensive than generic RAM, I would be very, very likely to buy this because the white obviously is gonna go really, really well in the system in comparison with the rest of the stuff we've got in there. I may have to spray paint the new graphics card though. I'm sure that would invalidate the warranty. But anyway, so there we go. So that is the uh, Tough RAM XG. While we've got the screen in this display, I'll also show you the uh, the Thermaltake Intel LGA 1700 and AM5 upgrade kits. So this is for our AIO, which is currently water cooling the system. Yeah, just do that. So this looks very similar to the, uh, the kind of Corsair AIOs. Now something which is very annoying and I will say this, and I think I said it actually in the review, the Thermaltake AIOs on the AM4 platform especially, the actual pump is really hard to put on because the back plate isn't fixed. So as you're putting the screws through, the back plate just falls off unless the motherboard is actually out of the system. Whereas with this now, with the new AM5 kit, this could not be easier. So all we need to do is clip this part. I'm guessing it's going to be that way up. I suppose it'll be obvious in the instructions. Should I care to read them? So yeah, that's right. So for the AM5, you're going to be going through like this, one of these on each end, thumb screw on each. So that's very good for tightening up. And literally you can see it's just going to be using those traditional AMD clips, which now are going to be easy to do. So that's going to be great. So I can uh, 
swap over processors very easily, test thermal pastes, etc. Which is something which I've actually kind of gone away from because of how difficult that cooler is to actually do anything like that. And I'm actually wondering, is there supposed to be any more screws? Ah, it appears... Right, yeah, there's screws that come in the kit. So those bits there, I'm not sure if you can see that very well. So those bits that screw on the top, those are actually included in the original kit. Because as you can see there, so A is the bracket, B is those two, C is the back plate there, which is for Intel, and D is for Intel as well. So on the Intel side of things, you stick the back plate on, good move sticking it on, that's very good. Yeah, so that is the only changes there. So that is just a spacer for the other system. So anyway, that is the, uh, the upgrade kit. I'm very, very pleased about that. And that is another reason why actually why I wanted to go AM5 because this just makes testing and all that kind of stuff just so much easier to do. And I really want to get into doing some thermal testing on pastes on the new AM5 platform because I think that is going to be the more dominant platform going forward. And potentially is the one that requires the most cooling. So it'd be good to see what pace actually uh, cut the mustard, so to speak. So anyway, it's good to know that um, Thermal Take are kind of looking after their customers and rather than like some other more generic brands where they produce a cooler and then basically when another socket comes out, they just ditch the cooler and do a new one. Daisy, what are you doing? So yeah, having an upgrade kit is great. And looking after your customers, giving your investment in your components a little bit of life is excellent. Like that a lot. Uh, Atypical Mel says, how does that work since the four standoffs on the board are fixed? Um, I will show you that now, because we'll take a look at the, the motherboard. Now, do I need to zoom out for this? Or will I be able to? Yeah, I'm gonna have to zoom out. That would make sense. Oh, that's zooming in, that's zooming out. There we go. Let's uh, put that on the floor. Daisy, come and have a pee on Bob's monitor. <laughs> I'm only joking, Bob. Okay, Mag B650 Tomahawk Wi-Fi B650 chipset. So for those of you that don't know, this is basically a cut down version of the, uh, the X670. That's the thing about them, uh, chipset and the extreme version. So effectively, for all intents and purposes, the only thing this doesn't have is PCI Express Gen 5 and potentially additional lanes to support all the different PCI Express slots. On the back of the box, so usual kind of deal. So robust power design. So it says 14 phase VRM. It's actually 18, uh, sorry, 17. So you've got 14 phases for the actual chip. You've got two phases for the SOC and one remaining phase, so 17 phases in total, all of which using 80 amp smart power stages. 2.5 gig LAN, as we said, Lightning Gen 4, so it's PCI Express Gen 4 for CPU, graphics card, and all of your M.2s. M.2 Fraudster Shield, you've only got two, not three, which just sucks. DDR5 support, obviously, because it can't do anything else other than that. Lightning 20G, so you've got your 3.2 Gen 2x2 up to 20 gigabits per second USB Type-C ports. Wi-Fi 6E Bluetooth, Bluetooth 5.2. Memory boost, basically overclocking. And you can see the uh, I.O. layout there. Um, you've probably noticed actually already the board design, the box design, very, very bland, like really bland. So I'm just gonna work out where on the screen is best. So you don't actually get a lot either in the box. So clearly you get your motherboard. You'd expect that for the money. You get a plastic inlay, oh, sorry, cardboard inlay. You get some lucky stickers. In the case of you'll be lucky if you see me stick any of those on my case or in my case. So those aren't gonna happen. You get that nonsense. 
you don't get a user manual. So if you want to actually get a manual to know what everything does, you have to scan a QR code. I'm not keen on that, but I guess that is the way the world. You get two very, very generic antenna for your Wi-Fi. You get a single lonely SATA cable, right angled at one end. That I think is probably a good idea because I don't feel many people these days use a whole bunch of SATA drives, but maybe you do, let me know. And last of all, you get the M.2 lockers. So you get a pair of lockers, not a pair of knockers, Bob, if that's what you're thinking. M.2 lockers. So this is MSI's new method of securing M.2s. So basically it's a screw. There's a plastic hinge which goes around and holds the drive in place. So once those are actually installed, you don't ever need to use a screwdriver again to remove a drive, at least in theory. So that is what you get in the box. That is literally it, nothing else. It feels a bit, a bit tight. A letter says, it's hard for me to scan QR codes since I don't have a phone. Yes, I'm... Yeah. I'm wholeheartedly against QR codes in general, just on principle. It's, uh, you never know what is embedded into them. You could scan it and end up in all sorts of trouble. So I'm generally against QR codes as a general state of mind. Right, let's have a look at the motherboard. So, AM5 socket in the middle. Go away. So AM5 socket in the middle with the prote protective, protective thing over the top there. You've got your A, can you say it? LGA bracket there. So you open it up and you can see those extremely, extremely delicate pins in there, which I honestly don't know even if they're pins. They don't look like they stand up enough to be pins. I'm gonna to have to get the magnifying glass because I think that's bullshit. Where's the magnifying glass? Oh, there it is. I didn't even have to get up. So, I'm not sure how this is going to work. Oh, don't break the pins. No, I don't think that's going to work for you people at home, is it? To be fair, I don't think it's going to work for me. Oh my god. They are pins and they are freaking tiny. Like ridiculously tiny. Holy shit. Right, that is not good. I don't like it at all. Uh, Ordinary Dude says they're more like leaf springs than pins. Yes, they are actually. Uh, you, If you think of pins as being something which would stick kind of straight up, or vertically, they're not. They're kind of uh, like, almost like when you put an M.2 drive in on that angle, and they don't make contact until it's pushed down. The uh, LJ pins or whatever work in a very similar way. <sighs> so yeah, make sure there's no dust in there at all ever, because otherwise that is gonna be a very bad day. So the way that the, uh, the new cooler would work or the retention clasp, might as well show you that now, just so you get an idea of how it works. I actually like this a lot. This is gonna be great. So if you're installing, obviously, your pump, you'd have your two screws on the top. I haven't got the screws on mine because they're actually on the other unit as, it's, as we are at the moment. So basically, you're kind of just going to be going over the uh, little plastic clip at the back there, which is really hard for me to see. So yeah, you get the general idea. So that is going to be how it attaches. A couple of thumb screws on the top, you're good to go. So you're never going to have to loosen off your... Um, bits at all you don't touch any of these screws here the torx is so these are the only ones that you do change now if you don't want to use a regular stock cooler anything which actually mounts to this part and is at the right tension and is approved to be used because this is the problem now if you use a cooler which physically fits but uses too much or too little pressure your cpu is going to push on those pins and not make contact and that is going to involve instability, which absolutely sucks. So it, with it like that, 
you can use something like the the wraith stock cooler the um wraith prisms all that kind of stuff sorry no the wraith rgb not the prism the prism uses the latch mechanism pretty much most coolers are going to adapt to there in some way but i wouldn't take it for granted that if you've just because you've got that that it's magically going to fit now something which is really good which is going to solve a lot of hassle is i've lifted the board up you'll notice that the back plate doesn't fall away which is absolutely excellent so if we look on the back of the board which we don't normally do with motherboards these days there is the back plate for am5 which is actually integrated to the back of the board so that actually clamps to this clamping mechanism so in order to take all that out you'd have to remove those four screws there to take off the whole thing as you can see the four screws come through there so this is actually really cool so even if you've got your motherboard inside a case and you want to change over your cooler even if you have to take off your am5 brackets or am4 style brackets it isn't going to make a blind bit of difference because this back plate isn't going to fall off so when you're trying to put your screws down through, you're not going to be pushing your screws down and this back plate trying to kind of wiggle out the back, which I think is absolutely excellent. I'm very, very happy with that. That is one of the few things I think AMD have done absolutely spot on. And uh, I think we should applaud them for that. Having a fixed back plate is a great idea. It's a shame they didn't do that 10 years ago with AM4 or however long ago it was. Thing. Freedom, which one? Blow your horn to give them a round of applause. Yeah, well done, AMD. You did a good thing. Oh, that's muted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right again. You've ruined it, Calf. You've ruined it. Uh, actually, while we got the board out here, let's have a look, see what the uh, the RAM looks like in position. Uh, Lucky Man says, Brillo pad the pins for extra connection. That sounds like it's not a great idea. Normally, I would like to uh, recommend your ideas, Lucky Man, but that is not one of the ones I appreciate. So RAM-wise, I think all DDR5 now has got the clasps on both ends, and also there's metal bits in there as well to make sure it holds in properly. So usual deal. So... The smaller pins down this side, there is actually a metal bar in the middle as well. It just seems to be really... Oh, that didn't sound nice. <laughs> That's a lot more creaky than I was expecting. But then it is brand spanking new, so what do you expect? Well, there was a lot of force needed there, so... Ah, that's better. So you've got to be a little bit more... Um, a little bit rougher with these now than what you do normally. I think these look pretty cool. Spacing wise between DDR5 and the CPU socket, you may find with some boards that the actual chips are gonna be closer to the socket. And that is because the distance between the RAM and the socket has to be lower, or they have to have extra additional layers on the PCB to make sure that the signaling is correct and the timings are right. Um, yeah, this is gonna be um, an interesting move into the next generation of sockets, basically. Uh, Ordinary Dude says, Mike, you may as well mount the CPU while you have everything on the desk. That is not a bad idea. Let's do that. And hello, John Sullivan. Good evening to you, sir. So let's get our processor ready. I don't want to have any excuses for debris to fall into the socket. So in order to change one of these, it's basically the same as your Intel. So open that, lever this up. With the socket open, you can take out your processor. There is a little triangle in the top, although essentially it's the same as it was previously. And you can gently lower CPU into the socket and you can give it a little wiggle just to make sure that it's level put this down as you push down on there this bit should pop out and there 
there we go that is it in place so the only two pressure points are here and here and then on the front or the back but yeah that looks pretty like that Uh, atypical mouse says mike do you think amd could hit five gigahertz ipc on pga i think lga helped them achieve it um yeah i guess is from an engineering point of view it's hard to make the pins any smaller on the processor to give you the additional bandwidth and pins and density of pins that is needed for modern computing whether or not the five gigahertz limit was that problem i don't know because even years ago we used to have the uh, Intel Core 2 Duos hitting 5 gigahertz on liquid nitrogen. So I don't think it is so much, but um, yeah, for in general purposes, it probably does help a little bit. So other points of note. So we've got a massive heat sink here, which is obviously covering up uh, the VRMs. I haven't taken this off yet, so I'm not going to do that at the moment, just in case. Don't want to lose anything. Um, what else we got? So you've got your socket here for your M.2s, which is going to be a smaller Phillips. So let's have a quick look at that. So the, the new mounting system on here is a little bit unusual. So when you take this top off, you get this section come off with it. And each one of them has got this kind of locker thing on it with the plastic bit. There's also one on the board as well. So if I show you how to install a M.2 with this new mechanism, hopefully you can see that. And it isn't, it is a little bit contrasty, isn't it, that picture? So let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. I think that's the opposite. Let's move that forward. Yeah, I think that's okay. You should be able to see that, all right? So we're going to be installing a uh, Crucial P3, two terabyte drive. Daisy, what are you doing? Dripping on my bloody floor. So there is actually a tiny little screw in there already, which holds all that in. So you don't need to actually remove this at all. Just leave that as it is. Just move the bar around to the outside. Put your drive in on a little bit of an angle, give it a wiggle till it fits in. Then you can push that down and then you can push the, push the plastic around and that just locks it in place. So when you want to take it out, flip that around and the drive comes loose. So it's a very simple thing to do. Works very easily. When you're putting this back in, there is like a protective film on there, which you want to remove. That just peels off. Again, most of you have probably seen all this before, so you just remove that. I'm going to leave it in place for now, but anyway. So, put it. Make sure you put it around the right way. Luckily, MSI have put numbers on these now, so you can tell which way round it goes. But they won't physically fit both ways. And do that screw up first, and then do that one up. And there you go, that is basically your M.2 drive installed. Very simple, no faffing around with tiny little screws really, at least only these ones. Works very well. And again, you've got that latch which is pre-installed down here at the bottom as well. So when you're installing your drive, you just put that latch round and it locks the drive into place, which makes life very easy. At the bottom here, there is another M.2. Like somebody said earlier, I can't remember it was who said it, but the point of having the um, only two M.2 shields just seems really bizarre. Like, why not just have another one? I'm guessing it's to do with space because if you look at how big this actually is, when it goes there, it would physically fit there, but then that drive is in core, in, like encased. So the only thing they could have done really was to take the BOSS battery, move that down here and move that up there. There must be a reason why they didn't do that, but I'm not entirely sure why. And maybe having an M.2 shield, which went across both, 
might have been beneficial. Maybe a something they just couldn't engineer. I, I don't know. But it just seems a shame that there's only one M.2 shield. And if anything, I would have thought it's probably best to take the top one off and just have two down the bottom because your primary one is generally going to be your fastest one and probably going to come with its own shield anyway. So, yeah, ordinary dudes just said there, yeah, why not one large one for both? I agree. It's, uh, it's a little bit strange. I don't quite understand it. They managed to do it on the Intel board, but not on the, uh, the AMD one. Now, it isn't a deal breaker in any way, shape or form. And realistically, when it's in a build, you can have your big graphics card here, your IO is all gonna be plugged in down here. So it's not really the sort of area you're gonna be looking at a great deal anyway. And the whole point of these types of boards is the fact that it's a performance board. So you're gonna be playing games and stuff rather than just actually looking at it. But anyway, uh, other key features. So down here, like I said, we've got that chipset, which is now the ALC 4080. So that's the onboard audio, got extra capacitors built in as well to reduce noise and et cetera, et cetera. Got six fan headers. So there's a CPU header there, tiny one. You've got AIO. Then you've got a system fan header. There's another system fan header there. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight headers in total. So system fan there. Two more system fans there, another one there. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of fan headers on here, which is always a nice thing to see. What else have we got? So we've got two SATAs at the bottom, got another four on the side. You also got the USB 3.0 sideways firing now, rather than being the one on the board, like facing in towards the case. I quite like that for table management. Uh, IO, let's have a look at the IO on the back. This is actually pretty cool. Got some nice I.O. going on here. So you've got your uh, BIOS flashback button there, which works well. I've already done the BIOS flash on this. It does work in a slightly different way than previous, which I'm kind of pleased about because it's more content. But yeah, some people may be using this and thinking, why is it not working? So there will be reasons why it isn't working. Uh, you'll be pleased to see there's no PS2 ports anymore. Those are gone. You've got display ports, you've got HDMI 2.1, DisplayPort 1.4, so that's going to support um, 4K 60 hertz, 2.5 gig LAN, Realtek chipset, like I said, so that's better. You've got your two USB uh, super speed ports there, so that's 10 gigabit per second, one of which is your flashback port. You've got your USB type C, so that's a USB 3.2 2x2, 20 gigabit per second, another 10 gig per second above it. Standard two USB 2.0s, so perfect for keyboards and mice. Then you've got a stack of four USB 3.2 Gen 1s, so that's going to be five gigabits per second. Moving along, you've got your Wi-Fi 6E. That's on a M.2 E card. So if you want to actually swap that out, you can do. Got two screws there. Remove those. Two screws there. Take the back plate off the shield, and you can remove the M.2 card and replace it with Wi-Fi 7 or Wi-Fi 8 or Wi-Fi 30, whatever is out. Then you've got your outputs, 7.1 surround sound, also optical speed if. And yeah, I think that is pretty much it for the board. Stuart's money's still on there. <laughs> it is, yeah. There is, uh, oh, PCI Express Gen 4 times 16, fully wired. PCI Express Gen 4 times 4, I believe, wired, but PCI Express Gen 4 times 2 speed. I do need to check that because I'm sure that's a 4x4, four because four, it looks like it's wired for 4, not 8 or 16. But it did say in the manual that I downloaded that it was PCI Express Gen 4 uh, times 2. Let's just check it on the box, actually. Uh, yeah, expansion slots, it just says two times PCI 4.0 times 16 slots, but they're not both wired for times 16, so that is kind of useful, useless information. I would say it's a times four slot. I think the times two is a typo, because it looks like it's times four. But yeah, 
Uh, what else we got? So we've got RGB ports, normal RGB. There's another normal RGB at the top. There's also two addressables, one down in this corner and one up here. Diagnostic D-LEDs. Oops, sorry. Uh, diagnostic LEDs on the side where you're used to seeing them. Usual point there. So yeah, I think that is uh, pretty much it for that. Daisy, no. <laughs> right, there we go. Right, I'm going to take the uh, the CPU and stuff out because I don't know why, but it just scares me. Although it's probably better off leaving the CPU in there. That is under a lot of tension. And it's actually, oh God, that's hard to get out. Swapping CPUs is gonna be something which you're not gonna to wanna to do very often, I think. I think it's gonna be one of those slightly terrifying tasks. And how does that go on there? Oh well, I've broken in my uh, USB and, not my USB, my uh, Gen 5 DDR. Happy days. So let's, yeah, I have popped the cherry. So let's go back to the main camera. So is there any questions that you would like answered on this setup? Or any questions in general? We'll have a look at the uh, that uh, monitor from Bob very shortly. I'll get this back in the box. Come on. Uh, O'Reilly says, hmm, if my only choice with upgrades are LGA sockets, I think my future computer usage is going to be a Mac or a tablet. Do you know what? I'm not keen on it myself. I'm very much of the opinion that I it's just not good. I don't like LGA. PGA for me was great because you, as long as you're careful with your processor and didn't physically drop it, you're okay. But with those tiny, tiny little leaf spring type pin things on there, it's just asking for trouble. Something is definitely gonna go wrong. As technology has increased and we've gone from like, what was it, socket uh, S370, where there was 370 pins and you could literally count them if you wanted to. It was quite easy to do. And that was tight, quite tight in there. Uh, yeah, I think just, I think it's eight, is it 1,881 pins for AM5 now? I'm not entirely sure. I'm guessing it's gotta be around that sort of figure. It just seems like it's, a, it's just an accident waiting to happen. And no doubt it will be. But it's gonna be nice actually to get a build done and with all this. Oh. There's a bit of paper in there. Uh, yeah, it's going to be nice to get a build done, get it all done and dusted, get AM5 on the go, see what it's actually like in real use. Because I know there's a lot of people out there, and myself included actually, that were really, really hesitant and thinking, no, AM5 is like, it's like, I don't know, it's like when there's a new Doctor Who or a program changes something and it's like, I don't want to watch it because it's not going to be the same. It's not going to be what I remember. It's not. They don't like change. Yeah, a lot of people don't like change. I don't like they change. Like B550s at first, before you got one. B550. Yep, yeah, I said exactly the same. There's no point whatsoever. But then it's an absolute waste of time. The price difference. Well, the thing is, B550 price difference at the time was very similar to this. Was it? It's not a lot different. But I think that because we have been somewhat spoiled by B450 boards being kind of really cheap at times, like um, 50 pounds we used to pick up boards for. I think at some point in time, correct me if I'm wrong here, those of you that are in the UK, but I seem to recall there was a time in the UK where you could buy the B54, the B450 Tomahawk, the standard version for 39.99. I'm sure I can remember that being a thing. I might be wrong. It might have been fifty nine ninety nine, but for some reason I'm thinking forty pounds seems like what it was, or was it the mortar? It might have been the mortar B four fifty mortar, and also the A three twenty boards, like the Gigabyte boards, the DS three H. You could pick up for thirty pounds. 
or the S2H, which was the cut down version, like twenty nine ninety nine from, I think it was CCL back in the day. It's, yeah, it's a very, very a weird time. Now there is a lot of complexity involved in this motherboard. First of all, it's a six layer PCB, which obviously increased costs. There's uh, two ounces of copper in between the memory channels, etc. So there's a lot of stuff going on. You've also got the extra performance and splitters, doublers, to actually make the signals go where they need to go. Bizarrely, there's no RGB actually on the board itself, which I don't really mind. I quite like to have a little bit of RGB around the chipset, but if it's one of those extra costs, then I'm pretty much glad they kept it out. But I am generally interested to see what it performs like. As long as it performs as good as, or similar to my um, 5800X or the 3900X in there, then I think it's probably not a bad shape, being that you can pick up the 5800 now for some of the reason about 200 pounds ish, 220. The 3900 never really dropped down that far. You're looking maybe 250. Being that this is brand new out of the packet with a warranty for about 250. If it keeps up with those, then although we haven't really moved very far, at least it's not a step backwards in terms of you're spending money and getting less which I don't think is going to be the case. But <laughs> I, I've been wrong before, haven't I, Calf? It, it happens. So we'll see. But I'm, I, actually gen, I am genuinely excited to do this and get it done. I was hopefully planning to do this on the stream tonight, but because of what happened with the PC yesterday and then the graphics card today, etc., it just it wasn't one of those things and I'm, I'm still trying to work out how i can live stream and do work on computers at the same time without involving some levels of complexity which make my head hurt but we'll get there although saying that british rail said that and they went bust yeah yeah they uh they use some de uh, dubious advertising methods, let's say. Ugly Bob says, no RGB, you say? Well, that's for the family rail card. Yeah, get your family rail card. Cringe. Mm. So, yes. Very cool. Uh, thanks again, massive shout out to Thermal Take UK for sending these bits and pieces over to us. Because... Uh, it's, it's expensive gear. But at least that way, we can test it, try it, see what it's like, and, well, you know what I'm like. I don't hold back. I say exactly what I think. If I think it's a bullshit rip-off, I'm going to tell you. And if it upsets Thermal Take, then I'm sorry. But if it upsets people, then they shouldn't be making me upset in the first place. He actually... We've had some weird things come through this week, actually, for people asking us to review... There was a couple more vacuums as well, which never really keen on doing those because our house is a mess, so it's no, not going to happen. Uh, but one of which was a uh, a bike from, what was the company? Tech? I want to say Tech Moon, but that's a, a channel. But there was a company that reached out to us in the stream uh, last weekend, I think it was, possibly the weekend before. They sent us an email and there's a uh, electronic e-bike or e-scooter rather which they want us to review. And I'm still, I'm, I'm really in two minds about that. Is that something that you guys would be interested in seeing? Me hurtling around the local parks and stuff on a scooter whilst trying not to kill myself? I don't know if that'll be, uh, that'll be fun or not. Tetron. Tetron, that's him. Yeah, Tetron. Uh, what's the scooter name? Did it say on there? I think it's the e it's uh, no, it's a scooter. It's the Eco 3500, is it? Or the Pro 3500? Pro 3500. Pro 3500 e-scooter. E that would be... Because it e? electric. Ah. Uh, because it has to be connected to your phone. Some nonsense. Uh, Ordinary Dude says... 
It's almost like they make these stupid motherboard layout decisions on purpose to make them not as good as their Intel boards. And that is in relation to, check the MSI manual, M.2-2 is not on a shared PCI Express lane, whereas PCI Express M2-3, which has the heat shield, is a shared PCI lane. Does it say what it shares it with? Is it sharing it with the, la the PCI Express times four slot, the bottom one? I guess it would be. Okay. Uh, Rob Roy says, uh, Mike, I kick myself loads of X570 boards at one time, going for just over 50-ish quid, uh, both on Amazon Warehouse and eBay Best Offers. I do remember some, I don't know, those weren't, there were some X370 boards which were going really cheap, I recall, a while back. Daisy, what are you doing? Lunatic cat. Um, yes. Anyway, moving on. The Freckle Puny says, RGB is for kids. Consider me a kid. <laughs> I do like RGB. I think it's just cheerful. Sometimes it can be nice and tasteful as well if it's all one colour. Actually, saying that, we can do that now because we are all AMD in here at the moment. So I'm going to see if I can... This is a practical test, by the way. I'm not just doing this for RGB. But previously... Uh, whilst doing this stream, if I changed a setting in MSI Center, it would make my microphone stop working. So I want to see if that is the case now. So I'm going to continue talking like I do. And I'm going to set this to a steady color of red. Click apply. And see if my microphone stops working. be interesting to see if it actually does. I don't know whether it will. Is it red yet? Yay, we're AMD's right up. Uh, da, da, da. Rick H says, I like color and shiny things. Well, that's a good thing. You come to the right place because I've got a shiny head and I've got a colorful PC. Maybe you can just put a link on Amazon. All right, what's that for? DDR5, 148 pounds. Uh, what, oh, well, this stuff? Two times 16, no. All right. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Freckle Puny says, what will 8000 series CPUs bring us? And let's not get started on AM6. I'm hoping that AM5 will be around for probably, if I had to guess, I would say four years. I think four years for AM5 is a safe bet. Freedom House as well. Cheers, Freedom House. Uh, iRafelix says, I have a question. Is there a problem if I use Intel XMP DDR5 RAM on AMD? No, in general, XMP and the new, uh, what was it, XOCP for AM5 is kind of basically the same thing as it was with AM4 and AM3 for that matter, I suppose. Ideally, I suppose, if you wanted to be an exact stickler, then you should probably look for XOCP certified RAM, but very rarely does that happen. Uh, Stuart Cleary says four years. All right, Dutch Jan says M.2-3 supports PCI Express Gen 4 times four. What's uh, Stuart Cleary saying, David Dickin? I want to get that RAM just so I can have, just so I can say, I have a beast of a machine. So Amazon Warehouse used like new uh, Kingston Fury Beast 32 GB 2 by 16, 6,000 mega transfers per second, 148 pounds. Which, if you think about it, price-wise, that isn't terrible. Like 32 gigabytes of decent. Uh, DDR4-3600 RGB is probably going to beset you back at least 120 maybe 130 possibly more depending on what brand if you go with like Corsair Vengeance then or their um, what's their cheap RGB range I can't think what it's called but if you go with the Corsair stuff you might get a bit cheaper 
But I don't think £150 for 32 gigabytes of RAM is that obscene. And if you think 16 gigs is going to be roughly half the price, maybe slightly less, so £70-ish for 16 gigs of RAM for a reasonably good quality set that's not awful. It's probably only, what, £20 dearer than DDR4? Which, £20 is £20, don't get me wrong. £20 for some people is a lot of money. It makes a big difference. But in terms of if you're buying and thinking forward a little bit, so if you're buying DDR4 now, you're probably going to get it for a good price. And that is because, like most shops and retailers, they know that DDR4 is kind of coming towards the end of its kind of peak. So that is going to get to a point where you'll see RAM prices drop off even more. Not, I don't think it's going to get less than £20 per 8 gigabyte stick. I don't think that will happen. It might, but it's unlikely. So that is kind of like rock bottom pricing. 20 to £25 per 8 gigs is kind of where it bottoms out. And that is pretty much where we are now. So you might see the odd dip, but realistically from now on in, it's only going to get more expensive because it will become rarer. Manufacturers will stop making it in such bulk as they switch over to DDR5, in which case then DDR5 prices will start coming down slightly. DDR4 will meet it and eventually will surpass it as DDR3 did with DDR4. So by buying DDR5 now, and a more modern platform, if you are building a new PC, is gonna give you that little bit of headroom. And also the DDR5 is obviously gonna last X amount of years down the line with Intel and AMD. Whereas AM, uh, sorry, DDR4 is now only gonna be supported by AM4 and some Intel platforms. 14th gen Intel won't support DDR4 at all. So there is gonna be that kind of hard line maybe next year where there will not be motherboards made that supports DDR4 unless it's kind of like a, a specific kind of uh, maybe custom boards or possibly mini ITX boards, but I don't know. Mookie MC says scooter could be content for the blooper reel. <laughs> I quite like the idea of it. I've been asking them some questions about if the batteries are replaceable, the cables, the brake pads, and all that kind of stuff, because I don't want to be recommending or promoting something which is basically going to be e-waste after a couple of months. What's the significance of CL numbers? As the faster the RAM, the higher the CL number. Yeah, your the CL number is the CAS latency. So that is basically how quickly your RAM reacts, basically. So frequency is the speed it operates at, but latency is basically how long it takes to do a cycle. So if you had extremely fast frequency RAM, but it had a rubbish latency, for certain tasks it would do really well that liked frequency, but for some things like games where it likes to have a fast response, it would perform badly. So some people will go with like DDR4 3200 CL16 RAM, because CL16 is quite low, rather than going for DDR4 3600 CL18. Because although the frequency is higher, the latency or the response time is slower. It's kind of, I'm trying to think of how I can explain it another way. So if it, if it was like buying a monitor. So if you had a, I'm trying to think how I can say it, a 4K 60 Hertz would be great for watching movies, but rubbish for playing games. Whereas a 165 Hertz 1080p would be great for games, but not so great for movies because it can't support the higher resolutions, but it's a fast response time. So for games, it'd be fine. Whereas 4K 60 Hertz for movies would be great because you've got that extra resolution, so it looks good. And movies don't really relay or don't need quick response times to display a picture. And RAM is kind of the same way, if that makes any sense at all. Did that make sense? It kind of made sense in my head. But that doesn't mean anything. Sorted. Uh, sorted. First time catching you live. Thanks for joining us. And Kilo. And Kilo. Thank you for joining us also. Uh, a letter says, Bill Zoid said RAM primary numbers is mainly for marketing. I guess, well, all of it is really, if you think about it, in kind of 
real terms, especially when you talk about frequencies for CPUs as well. And things like TDPs, all those things are like marketing bullshit, really. Kilo, can you answer that question? Or did you already? Uh, kilo. Uh, XFX. Uh, XTX versus 4080 versus 1070. These prices are with taxes. Which do you think, which do you think I should get? Um, I don't know what you're doing. Are you gaming? Are you video editing? Are you, I don't know, what is the rest of your system? It's hard to say. Given the choice of those, I would probably go with the, I'd probably go with the 4070 Ti over the XTX. My personal opinion, but then I do video editing, so it does rely more so on Nvidia than it does on AMD for video editing. Maybe join our Discord and we can go into it in uh, much more depth. Patrick says, frequency is how fast you have to go to the bathroom and latency is how long it takes to do the job. <laughs> That's excellent. Uh, I like that. You're going to clear that forever more now, That is, yeah, I'm, can I borrow that one? When I say borrow, I mean steal. That's excellent. Frequency is how fast you have to go to the bathroom or how long it takes to get to the bathroom. And latency is how long it takes to do the job. <laughs> that's, that's quite good. I like that. That's right. Um, Kilo, right, so you're doing um, gaming, editing, and recording. Yeah, go with the NVIDIA. 100%. Mookie MC, let's see the monitor. That's a good idea. Oh, uh, Kieran's with us. How are you doing, Kieran? So it's hopefully the board will be back with you next week. Uh, ask them to send it directly to you. Fantastic. Soon as it does, I will get that tested. I am going to order a 12th gen processor to see. I don't want to take mine out of my board now because I'm really terrified that. Out of your board. Yeah. PC. Oh, yeah, yeah. Motherboard. Okay. Um, I don't want to tamper with the pins or the the tension that is working. I want to leave it that way. So I'm not touching that. So I'm just going to buy a 12100, stick it on there, and see what happens. Game Max Black Hole case after you've watched your video. Ah, cool. Nice one. Thanks for uh, watching the videos. And thanks for supporting Game Max. Game Max has been really good to us over the years, as have uh, V Color and Thermal Take, MSI, etc. So it's nice the, that our viewers maybe can return some of that goodwill and buy some of their stuff. Awesome. Uh, Alessa says I'm running DDR4 RAM at uh, 3800 CL14. There's very little difference between that and 30, uh, 16, 3600 CL16. In some th in some things that aren't particularly memory intensive, you won't notice any difference at all. Um, ordinary dude. Does the AM5 CPU seem any more stout compared with the LJ1700? Less likely to bend. Uh, yes, 100%. And I would say the AM5 socket is uh, massively, massively reinforced. The Intel one is basically a couple of little flakes of metal. Whereas the AM5 one, as you saw when we flipped over, you got that massive chunk of metal and you've also got it coming through on the other side as well. And it's also got eight screws holding it in place as well rather than the four on the intel which is just the four uh, torque screws so this has got four torque screws plus four phillips head screws as well so yeah it's a much much better uh implementation of lga i still hate it hopefully it'll work better i'm looking forward to it uh mark 1988884 says really good live show where send a link we should all go uh, Skystalker says, Mike has the best sponsors. I don't have any sponsors. <laughs> They're not sponsors. It's just companies that we work with. I suppose if you could, I suppose you, you know, they're not really sponsors. They're just partners, companies that we partner with for things. We don't, um, that's something me and Kath said at the beginning. We don't really want us to take sponsorships on because then you lose any kind of creative license or the ability to basically tell, tell, companies to go F themselves if they start behaving badly or try and promote sponsors. stuff. <laughs> yeah, you lot are the sponsors. Oh, 
a day they can cat sat today, didn't they? Dave was cat sitting for a daisy today. Oh, no, Maisie, wasn't it, today? Right then. <laughs> Let's have a look at Bob's monitor before he uh, smash it to pieces. So this is the MSI Optics Mag 16-2V. Portable design, ultra slim, IPS panel, full HD 1080p's, display type C connector. I haven't got anything with type C output on it to actually test it with, sadly. I think. No. Uh, HDMI, it's got night vision. I'm not sure if you strap it to your head and wear it in the garden, you can magically see bad guys, I don't know, maybe. Uh, let's just send them to the Ukraine, it'd be very handy. Kittens Sorry, Bob. Um, 15.6 inches on a good day with the wind on your side and it being warm. What else have we got? Pierre yeah. said, Did you use the contact frame on your Intel and do you plan on getting an AM5 contact frame? Um, I don't plan on getting an AM5 contact frame and I have used the thermal right one on my own personal system. Did I put it back in? I don't even know if I did or not. I was really scared that I'd broken it. Is it in there? No, I have, it is. There we go, the contact frame I put back in the box after using it because I was concerned that I'd done something wrong, but now I know what I've done wrong, I probably will put it back in. And make a new video, make a new video explaining why I was such a moron in the first one. Uh, what do I come over here for? Sorry, I'm walking around aimlessly. Wires? No. A knife. Right. Do it, I'm gonna I'm gonna use Bob's knife that he sent because oh, you said you couldn't use it. You could this th this thing is lethal. It generally is. I should sit down carefully. Then this knife Bob sent. I'm sure Bob's trying to do me in so he can uh, have it away with calf. But Bobby <laughs> or Poppy. So <laughs> it's it's cool because it's got an adjustable thing, but it's really stiff and you've got to really put a lot of pressure in to move it. I'm sure I'm gonna do myself in on this. If I do, it's, it's Bob's fault. Check contents if seal is broken. Well, the seal is broken. Then, the, oh, I say. Now this is not what I expected at all. That came in a box, in a box, in a box. This came in multiple boxes, so there was an outer box it then had another box around it, and then another box. And now it's in, and now it's in this box. It is like past the parcel. It's... it's like a Victorian, no, not Victorian. It's like a Russian doll. I'm gonna get this inside, and it's basically gonna be a little tablet about three inches wide. <laughs> be like that processor sized. <laughs> uh, Hugh Luttrell says, "Do you have old timers like me?" Oh, old time. I got you. No, no. You said that? I am going to do myself in though. Ah, oh, cheers. Ronnie says, I like it. Mike says, ooh, I say. As in, are you being served? <laughs> what was his name? Uh, was it John Matthews? The actor who uh, played Mr. Rumpole? Was it in Are You Being Served? Was it Mr. Rumpole? I can't remember. Yeah. Someone's gonna have to tell me. John Inman, sorry. Thank you, Bob. Man like Drakey can't beat opening a few boxes along the way. Gotta open some boxes. And they're not suitable boxes. For this family. actually, fair play, MSI. Actually, it originally started in this box. Yeah, it? <laughs> it did, yeah. MSI do a really good job with boxes. Where's the other box that I had? For the... Have I lost that graphics card box already? Oh, there it is. So that is a graphics card box. The MSI know what they're doing with packaging, don't they? That looks pretty cool. I like that. There's lots of red going on in here. It's, it's a very MSI AMD feeling going on here, currently in the uh, the Mub household. I did say actually, there was some. I was talking to um, Thermal Take, and we were discussing what boards to go well with their ecosystem of parts. And I said, well, I really like MSI stuff. And he's like, yeah, MSI stuff's really cool. Love it. And it's like, yeah, MSI and Thermal Take is a pretty, pretty good combination. Anyway, I digress. 
So, absolutely uh, exquisite packaging, very um, Apple-esque. It's a shame that you probably don't want to keep the packaging, you're probably going to end up chucking it in the bin. But there it is. So, MSI, it's all about what you see. Arguably, on a monitor, I would probably agree with that. That is a very, very valid statement. So let's give you the overhead so you can see what's going on here. So in the box, our energy rating, European regulations as usual, quick start guide. You have a, what appears to be a mini DVI to, uh, sorry, mini HDMI to full size. There's also a USB type C to type C and there is a type C to type A which actually makes a lot of sense because you're going to need some power and let's see what this is all about is there anything else under here no that is pretty much fixed in there so let's see is this actually can you see this I'm wondering I haven't checked the uh the overhead all right, let's uh, clear that. Where's my mouse? Clear. Let's get rid of that. And uh, that's about right. Oh, it's got a folio case or a folding case. Hey, that's pretty cool. So magnetic. comes off completely if you want to. That is reflective. A very slim line. That's $350 in all $350? Too expensive. Cheapers. So I'm trying to work out how that actually works and in terms of a stand. So in terms of a case, that makes total sense. So with that, how does that No. It looks a little flattered. I'm not sure how that works, so I'm going to leave that to one side. <laughs> uh, what have we got in here? So there's some rubber bump stops on the bottom, and also a couple of speakers, so for stereo. On this side there is a menu button, by the looks of it, or a power button possibly. A up-down rocker for going through the menu. There's also a 3.5mm headphone jack. Sorry, you can't see that, can you? There we go. Uh, there is on-off button up, down, and also press in for menus. 3.5 mil jack for listening to headphones, so when Bob's watching uh, U-Porn or whatever, you can uh, mute that so no one else in the hotel can hear him jerking. Um, and you've got type C, type C, and also your mini HDMI. X-Hamster. Oh, sorry, X-Hamster. I apologize. So I want to work out how this works it, without having instructions, because I'm sure... Where are the instructions? Let me see, and I can there's start a, with your warmer. There, there's a quick oh, start okay. guide. Go for it. So that covers up whilst it's actually in transport, which is actually pretty cool. And I guess you've put it in there as well, just to uh, protect that and maybe keep the leads in as well. So I'm guessing that that goes in front. And that goes behind. No. I don't know. Or is there a kick? There's not a kickstand, is there? No. It's lost me. It's lost me already. I can I, get it with the instructions, to be honest. I don't think there's a battery in here. So we need to provide this with some power. That'll be an interesting one. Let's go back to the main. So I have no idea, no idea how this is going to work at all. Do you not see the instructions? Is it going to help? I don't know. I... Rick H says real men don't need instructions. I know. Do you want the instructions? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need them. Okay. It's probably one of those things where it's absolutely obvious, but it isn't absolutely obvious. Something to do like a ledge on the back, I think. On the back of the monitor. 
Well, the, yeah, there is a ledge, so that's got to go to the back. It's... It sits on some of the bit a bit forward, like a laptop thing. There, look. Because you think that would bend forward like that, but it doesn't feel like so it's it got any support. Half of it goes in front and half of it goes behind. Let's have a look. It's not really that much clearer, to be honest. All right, so you've got to move that. It's like bloody origami or something. Right. Sandra on the crypt and flat factor. It, I, feels like it. We could do the assault course. So that there. bit is there. That makes absolutely no sense. It looks much longer on the instructions. It does. <laughs> I felt like we were getting somewhere then. That. No. no, that's not done it. Ledges in the wrong direction. Have you got it upside down? No. I'm really confused. Right, it looks like that's the... I was showing in the instructions that this is the same both ends, but it clearly isn't. And it looks a lot longer in the instructions. Show the instructions. There's the instructions. I've got no idea. The screen, the screen has got to um, clip in. I don't know. Put it on your head. I think it's got more use like that. Bob's got to have that mind. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> so, well, the outside surfaces must be the ones that go on the floor. Factor. <laughs> it's like the Krypton factor for monkeys. Oh, I remember it. It was hilarious, wasn't it? Might need a YouTube video on that. Who's out there? Out where? In the hallway. Amazing. Is there anyone that's not in it? Like no one. Uh, showing it there. So you can mount it in portrait mode as well. Like, on. that's never going to happen, is it? You're going to have to have a video on how to use this stand. This has got stupid instructions. The screen, has to, the screen has got to clip into the ridge to stay still. Yeah, but there's no... Regular monitor, much easier. There's no ridge to clip into, apart from... That's <laughs> the most ridge-like bit. Do the math. You do the math. Actually, that might do it. There. It's not really great. Um, but is that right? I have no idea of telling, but it still says MSI in the bottom corner. So that for me means that it's, and the magnets are kind of. Is it magnets? Yeah, there's magnets in there. So yeah, there is a bit of adjustment there. I have no idea. I'm very confused. Rally, I won't, that looks won't, right. Won't have much hope for getting that one back in one piece. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're absolutely right. I need some power. So where can I run the power from? So what do I need? HDMI. I need two USB type C's. Magnets should hold the monitor. But it's not really... It kind of 
show you that ridge thing as being part of it holding in place. Yeah. And that ridge is nowhere near any of them. Because it says it shows the ridge being in the back there. But then that doesn't really do anything. But then the piece in the plate in the instructions looks twice as long. Let's try that way round. Yeah, because that's got no ridge to it at all then. Unless you might have it all let down. That makes the most sense, like you just roll it round. <laughs> Check it in the bin. <laughs> oh my god. That might be it. Is that what I had before? I think so. I don't know. You know, it's leaning back more now, isn't it? Actually, yeah, that probably is it, because the MSI logo is at the front still, and if you want to adjust the height, you can move it back a little bit there. Is there it another? It was nearly falling forwards last time, wasn't it? Yeah, so that actually doesn't want to fall over now. And that is, I think that's it. <laughs> yeah, so that is the adjustment for there. Or you come out for there. So that is right. I would probably glue that in place. <laughs> but then you can. But can how do you do it up when it's portrait mode? <sighs> is that the same? No, I don't know. Don't confuse me. I don't want to know anything anymore. Mookie says, Mike is killing me and my OCD. Now get a roll of duct tape and really secure it. Now try it blindfolded. <laughs> You're not helping. What's this? That is how you've got it, I think, isn't Ooh, it? Oh, that's how, is that how I got it? So you've got the bit at the top, yeah. Sorry, Bob sent over a picture. Oh my God, my back hurts. My, um... <laughs> your back, it's your Brian. Oh yeah, it? no, that's what I got. That's what I think you got, yeah. Yes. I have vindicated myself. But the instructions really didn't help. Those instructions didn't help at all, but that picture did. Thank you. Is that Bob who sent the yeah. picture? Good old Bob. Right, what the feck am I going to plug this into now? I need something which is HDMI. Try your air hole. <laughs> um, right, USB power. So USB type A to USB type C. I've not prepared for this particularly well, as you probably realised. Uh, Kieran says, hey, Mike, tell Cap about the £219 MSI Tumult B5650 in Discord. That's what I've got on my desk. I've just been unboxing oh, that. Oh. Kieran. Uh, Nick Byron says, your portable battery charger. That's a bloody good idea. How many of these power things do I need? Let's see if we can do it from one. Let's grab... Oh, sorry, Calf. Can you... Pass over that Jean Gand thing. I bet that ain't gonna that work. It? Yeah. I can't see that far. At this point, I should say thank you to Jean Gand for sending over this uh, battery bank, which I've basically not used since the review. <laughs> Yeah, ugly Bob, why didn't you send two screens so you could do a blue Peter? This is what we made earlier. Oh, don't want to light simply. on. <laughs> right, is this actually going to work? Yay! MSI! The bank did likes to say yes. Right, HDMI no signal. Can we get the monitor or anything to happen? HDMI, no image. Oh, I know it's got no image. Oh, it keeps on turning itself off. I'm going to smash it to pieces. Uh, what, can I, what can I plug in here? Oh, this, this will work out really well. Let's plug in the stream. Because actually, this is what I wanted to use one of these for, is actually, rather than having that bloody great huge monitor, 
I could just plug in this. So this is not going to wreck the stream very much. There we go. I'll see if I can read your comments and questions. Oh no, it's moved all the bloody things over. Right, where's the thing? You know, the thing. Right, let's move those back over there. On that side. And go that side, text there. There we go. Happy days. Now would be a good time to insert ads. No, we won't. Actually, that's quite, quite a nice display, although it is reflective as a mother. What, res what resolution is this? I ain't. 1080p, I'll be damned. I'm going to have to minimise that a minute. Resolution, display settings, which is now going to be on the other screen. Identify, so screen number one. What is number one? Ah, that's why. Scaling, 100%. Better. It's actually quite a nice screen. Colours are nice. Yes, that scaling works much better. And questions and comments. There we go. Happy days. Let's spin that round. Considering that's just running off a power bank, that's quite impressive. And I'm not sure what the viewing angles are like. You'll have to be the uh, the judge of that. I think the reflective screen is something which I probably would not like personally, I think. So I think the um, is a little bit too reflective for the studio lights. But I guess if I adjust that down a bit. Yeah, it is quite reflective. Patrick's got Cheers, Patrick. Um, I could have read that off here. Is it touch screen? No. Right, let's see what I can adjust on here. Nope. It's, the stand isn't the most confidence inspiring, if I'm honest. Um, oh, we've got brightness. So the brightness is only at about 60% at the moment. Ooh. And there's actually... Um, there's actually got a decent menu on here as well. A little pop-up menu. I'll probably have to show you this as a uh, as a proper unboxing video. So gaming alarm clock. What have we got an alarm clock on there? So you can have that going off as well as angels every morning at four. Response time, fast, normal, or fastest. So it's got a few different settings on there. Now, how do you actually get out of this? Oh, top button, I suppose. There we go. How oh, was it? Oh shit, I just turned it off. It'd be nice to do things. Oh, I've turned the monitor off and turned it back on again. Is it going to put my windows back in the right place? Oh, some of them. Some's better than none. So what else do we have in the menu? So gaming, professional. So you've got image enhancement, um, low blue light. So let's turn that on. Oh yeah, it's gone very, uh, very low blue light. So if you're someone who is rather sensitive to that, then that might be uh, something you might want to change. Image enhancement. What does... Oh my God, that makes it very sharp. It's pretty cool. Right, let's go back one. So image, you've got brightness, contrast, sharpness, color, temperature and screen size. Why would you want screen size? Oh God, I pressed the oh, wrong button again. Uh, right, turn it on. There we go, we're back. Back in the room. It's, How much was that screen? My brain hurts. Uh, the screen, I think it's, is it 199.99? From the Amazon. So input source, you've got a choice of HDMI or Type-C or Type-C2. You've got a hotkey for brightness, game mode, alarm clock. All right, so the hotkey on the side, you can choose whether that brings up your brightness control, game mode control, alarm clock, input source, etc., etc. 
So that's actually uh, quite handy. And you can change the language. So we can change it to um, something which Bob won't understand. That'd be quite hilarious. Oh, I've pressed the wrong button again and again. Yeah. Instant karma, that was. It's instant karma. It does show up marks on the screen a bit. So my hands are a little bit greasy, but you are, it is singing yeah, you, fingerprints. You get those fingerprints now. He's going to lift those now and go and do some crimes. Yeah. Bastard. Print them out for his own fingers. Yeah. Don't change it to Greek. <laughs> Uh, where are we? Image, contrast, color temperatures, not screen size. All right, so you can choose. So if you're using this um, on some emulation device, Does the alarm clock you can choose four by three. Oh, let's have a look. Uh, where are we? Game in, game in, game in. Oh, we'll go back one, don't we? Oh, I've pressed the wrong button again. It's going to be horrendous, this review for you. I'm, swearing. The review is going to be me in various states of um, total, total annoyance. Right. Where are we? Professional. Image. Input source. Hotkey. Setting. Okay. I could have swore there was an alarm on here just now. Change the language to Australian. You can understand that. I have an Australian Siri. Oh, I've pressed the wrong button again. Right. Alarm play? clock. Alarm clock. Location. Top left. Oh, so it's just a countdown by the look of it. So it's top left. Let's try... Oh, yes, yeah, basically a one hour countdown by the look of it. You can adjust it ever so slightly. It's basically up to 60 minutes. Aletta's never used an alarm clock since she retired. We use one, don't we, every day to sleep through? Yeah. <laughs> I turn it off and you sleep. Ah, there we go. So if I move my. Where's the mouse? There we go. So there's a countdown timer there. I don't know why you'd want that. Maybe. Although saying that, if uh, you're on one of those X Hamster premium sites and you've got like a limited time in the uh, live cam booth with certain said lady of disrepute, then maybe you do want to keep an eye on it just so they don't go to the next billing cycle on your credit card. I don't know. Maybe that is why it's there. So you can have your, your countdown timer just to make sure it doesn't appear on your credit card and your missus goes mental. Maybe that's a thing. I don't know. Actually, they cats and they don't wake us up for food or anything, do they? No, they know better. Michelle I, Thorne charges by the quarter of an hour. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, where is the... How much? Response time, refresh rate. What's the going rate? <laughs> Where is that the setting? Uh, was it sharpness? So I think the sharpness is way too high now. I think that was another setting. Where was that? There was. A, I'm sure there was a setting just now that it was doing some stuff. <laughs> it's in bloody eco mode now. There was a setting just now which I changed for sharpness and I can't find it now. Or image and hunt. Ah, there we are. Image and. Oh shit, press the wrong button again. Image enhancement. Oh, if you press the button, it gets rid of the alarm clock. So if you press anything on the side, it gets rid of the alarm clock. So you might have to set that again, I think. Although it might pop up when I exit the menu. Let's have a look. Uh, but you have to turn the screen off before it does that. Yeah, I'll ruin it before then. Right. So, professional. Oh, damn it. Wrong button. <laughs> this is so frustrating. Right. 
down to professional, Im select, it's image enhancement, select. Are you doing origami with the settings Off. now? And back button, back button. Yes, getting used to it now. Are you doing origami with the settings now? I am doing origami with the settings. So the, the timer is still on there. I don't know what it does. Do you reckon it turns off the screen? I have no idea. I should take a look at the chat. Someone else might have an idea, because I certainly haven't. Right, uh, Ugly Bob, yep, Michelle, Michelle Thorne charges by the quarter of an hour. Uh, Trev Ortigad's in the house, how are you doing, Trev? John Sullivan uh, says, Ivor Hardon, glad to hear it. Uh, Lucky Man one was looking at that one too, mate, only went with the MSI one because a mate recommended it. And yes, it is on Amazon UK. Terry Trickett says, hi, how you doing, Terry? Uh, Raleigh says, Ugly Bob, send Mike this next. <laughs> next. Bob, Bob and his endless pot of cash, which he won't be spending on quarter of an hour sessions with Michelle Thorne et al. Uh, Portal Monitor, 17.3 inch, 1080p, 100% sRGB IPS monitor screen with HDMI, Type C, USB C, 239.99 for 17 inches and portable. Oof. That sounds way too much money. Too much inches. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I'm not sure if this is actually too small, actually, for me, for my eyesight. But anyway. Can't you use that size it up thing? You could scan it, yeah. If this was a touch screen, I would be far more impressed, but it's sadly it isn't. That would be that would be the icing isn't, on the but give it a go anyway. I cramp in my leg. <laughs> Instant karma. Bob. Stop it. Stop giving me cramp in my leg. <laughs> oh. Ow, Jesus Christ, that hurt. Oh, I'm getting old. Uh, cramp is never a good thing. Catherine says, in 20 minutes, it is cat's feeding time for me. Uh, Firestorm says, hi, Mike. Hi, all. How are you doing, Firestorm? Ugly Bob says, I have that voodoo doll calf sent me and I'm pinning the leg right now. Stop it. <laughs> it's actually not a bad screen. To be honest with you, if I, if I was using it with a laptop, I think it would be great. With my little uh, HP uh, G8, it would, be, it would be great with that because the 14 inch screen on there is a little bit small and come, sometimes you just want to have a little bit of extra real estate. So for, for working purposes, I think it'd be great. I don't know whether for me it would work for streaming and stuff like that. Because I think the text might be a bit small. I do struggle with that one sometimes. You should see my phone. Yeah, I suppose if I... Actually, I think I can zoom... No, I can't, can I? It's not there. The way so your I have to zoom going, I'm going to have to sell you one massive pocket on the back of your jeans to keep your... It doesn't seem to be using Maybe. much energy because that's only running off a USB 5 volt uh, 2.4 amp plug. So if you're considering one of these and you're not sure about how much power it's going to use, it doesn't seem to be using great RDNA at all. And there's basically, <coughs> excuse me, there's like no warmth to it whatsoever. What if the sound works as well? Sound appears to work. It's actually quite a nice sound. Hopefully Bob intends to use it. With his work laptop, so he can multitask as well as using a 24 inch monitor. Yeah, I think for, for multitasking, it, it's going to be really good. For if you're like doing camping or traveling and you've got like maybe a transit custom and you've done it out to travel around or VW camper sort of thing, and you want something that you can tuck away into somewhere nice and compact but still use and be able to watch movies when you're chilling, that sort of thing. I think it's going to be great for that and to go with a laptop because the, the size of it is basically kind of laptop size so you can stick it in a bag with your laptop and it shouldn't cause you too much trouble. 
I don't know whether 200 pounds seems like a lot, but having said that, I've never experienced any of the like the cheapy ones from Amazon, which I was looking at doing maybe 100 pounds, 150 pounds to see what they're like. But now I've seen this, at least I've got something which I can kind of visualize with and work out. That's uh, yeah. I'm not too sure if it's a tech, I'm gonna have to put my, my uh, glasses on. I'm not sure if it's blurry or whether it's just my crap eyes. Alan Carr, here we go. Yeah, Alan Carr. <laughs> right, Victor Meldrew. Now, what's the other, what's the, Harry Hill? Harry Hill, that's the... Here, let's get the Harry Hills on. Oh. Oh, is that Popsy? That's my adjustment screw. Cool, blimey. Do I need these glasses? They look worse. Cool, that's, oh my God. I can read it from back here. Well, which one's better? It's actually sharper back here than what it is up close. Which monitor is better? There's only one way to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Fight! <laughs> yeah, if I get close there, I can't read a bloody thing. But then with my normal eyes in, I can read that up close. So I must be getting shorter sighted or not. I don't know. I can read there as well. It's a little bit sharper, I suppose. I think it's just the text is quite small because it's 1080p on a 15.6 inch screen. So it's basically a laptop and I've got 100% scaling. So maybe if I went with, actually, why did I choose 100% scaling? That's stupid. Should be 125, shouldn't it? I can't believe I did that. 1080p on a 24 inch, it should be 100%, isn't it? Mr. McGee, Monaco. Hey, there we go. I can actually see the damn thing now. 125% scaling, jobs are good in. I can I see it. Half yeah, but then I can only see half of the screen on your side. So this is the problem I have. Because of the resolution now, because of the, normally I would have this screen up so I can read the chat down the side and I can see the stream stats there. So if I change this back to 100% scaling. Come on, you're supposed to readjust, you stupid machine. Okay, maybe I've changed it a few, a few times. But basically I need it to be that so that I can expand that enough so I can actually see what's going on. Where's the mouse gone now? There it is. So let's do that again. So yeah, with that I can see time dates, etc., super chat values, people watching, and I can see that, that, that that's how I would normally have it on my big screen. So that is 100% scaling. So if I set it to 125%, it says 150 is recommended. In which case that is like super readable. I can, yeah, that's kind of what you'd expect it to be. But now I can see basically nothing going on here. So I'd need to change the scaling on that screen, which I don't think you can change individual scaling, can you? So yeah, if I change the zoom level, it does it on all the Chrome windows rather than just one, which is a bit of a nose. So I think that actually rules out one thing which I was gonna do. So that is having a smaller screen to run the streams from. I was thinking about using an iPad, but I think that would be even worse, maybe. Um, I suppose really, what can I listen to on here, which would, I suppose it makes no difference, does it? Yeah, I want to see what the audio sounds like, see if it is actually, like, I guess most people would probably use headphones anyway. Why don't you put on that <clears> one <throat> Drive Into Wales one, because that had music on, didn't it? Okay. That was acceptable. Mics unboxing. Yeah, but it's not very clear, is it? I the audio. It Mike's unboxing. You, you can stretch. join today. <laughs> um, can you stretch each window manually. You can stretch them, but you can't change the uh, the scaling individually. 
Or at least as far as I can tell. Sounds right. William Booby, iPad, are you going pirate This was a used bargain. I'm going to tell you. right, thank you. Where is. Right, we want the menu. So we want the hotkey. Okay, so this is the Asus I think, personally, to be. Volume. This at the moment retails in the UK for somewhere in the region of a ludicrous £189.99 on Asus's own site. Yes. Whether it's worth that, that is an entirely different matter. Now, I was lucky to pick this up as a second-hand bargain from one of our Discord members. That's not too bad. Picked up with the 11400 processor, which I should point out, I will get people asking in the comments section, no, the motherboard does not come with the processor when you buy it. For most people, that's pretty obvious, but I'm just wanting to point it out. It's got nice speakers, actually. Yeah, there are some people out there. Anyway, let's move on. So I haven't got all the uh, bits and pieces that normally you'd associate with buying a brand new board. I'll just use the box. That's 50%. And stuff. But we do have a ROG antenna, which is awesome. Which is I like the fact that there's really modular control. So if you have got this in maybe like by the sides of your bed or something, if you're watching stuff late at night, you could adjust it on a very, very, very granular level, so you're not going to actually, um, not going to kind of wake people up, or you can get it to a point where, you know, you're moving it and it's hardly adjusting it at all, but it's just enough to make a very small difference. Sorry, it's clicking. Yeah. It's not a good time. Let me see if that stand is popping this board is kind of... It doesn't really distort. Life. There's a lot of people still using them, and they're not that popular. It's a little harsh. Obviously, people on 12th or 13th gen. But for me personally, I think that there is still an awful lot of value in the 10th and 11th generation series of Intel processors. You can pick them up pretty cheap online. CX. Actually, that might even go louder, mightn't it? Because I've got my Windows volume as well. Uh, I know that is set to 100%. So. Can't go wrong with the audio. Sounds absolutely fine. Uh, O'Reilly says, Mike, take a look at per tab zoom extension for Chrome browsers. See if that would work for you. That's a good idea. I might have to do that. I won't do that now. I'll do that in my leisure. So if I mess it up, it's all going to go wrong. Pop out the chat box and resize it and the remainder. That's kind of what I've done now. So... I use the, uh, the Windows resizing, well, not a resizing thing. Where's the doodah thing? Where's it gone? There we go. So I use the uh, the Windows 11 scaling thing. So I just set it to three quarters and then let it pop the, uh, the chat into the other side. I think it's a bit too reflective. I don't know, can you see the reflection on the screen? Is it coming across to you? Colours are really nice. So that's all pretty good. And also you've got Wi-Fi 6E, which is a tri-band support, so that's based on the Intel AX2 chipset. So yeah, very much a... That bloke on there is a right boring old git. Right, oh. That's what David Underhill said. Oh, the alarm's gone down to zero, 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 zero. I can't hear an alarm. That, well, Ordinary Dude says, yes, the reflection is obvious on camera. Yes, it is very reflective. Yes, I can see your screen reflection. Right, so, the alarm is not alarm. It's just a, basically a countdown. Okay, I think we've seen enough of that. Let's plug in my other screen again. I I wouldn't say I am disappointed because I didn't really know what to expect. 
But for my particular instances, I don't think it's going to work as I need it to. Which is a bit of a shame. Uh, let's get rid of that. Actually, I was saying that, looking at the colours now on my monitor there and there, I would say the monitors, because these are VA panels, or at least I think that, that might even be TN, I don't know. I think it's VA. But they do look more, like, there's more pop to them than this. And, oh, can you see the, uh, the fingerprints on there? Now, I guess, really, you shouldn't be touching a monitor, to be fair. And it's not a touch screen, so there's no real reason why you should do. But if you do touch it, it's absolutely all right because you can use winds, dash, and display cleaner. And that will clean it up nicely. It's good gear. I don't think you can use vinegar on plastic. I don't think so. I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> Sorry, Bob. It collapsed. I should have known better. It's an IPS panel, apparently. It's an IPS panel. Right, okay. says. I think it's IPS, but I don't think the colour gamma is quite as wide as it could be. I don't think it's like, um, is it DCI 3 or whatever it is? You read it, David Aiken. Just a little bit of the dust there. Multitasker. Perfect. I can't multitask. You should know by now. David Aitken, never use vinegar or Windex on LCD screens. Um, no, 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 that's a bit. Amazon Dill, MSI. MSI Mag B650 Tom Hawk Wi Fi, £199. Sorry, Mike. Oh, used like new? Oh, that's right. I, I don't mind that. I don't think I would buy a used motherboard now with LJ pins. I don't think it's a sensible idea. I think the second hand market is going to basically like destroy, get destroyed by these new motherboards. Although, saying that, Intel's been doing it for years and people have bought Intel boards, but then. They have been much cheaper. It's hard to clean, actually. Fingerprints don't want to come off. Now I've got to try and keep it clean before I do the bloody review. Right, how did this go on again, Calf? No I think it was that way. Is it there? No. Uh, what am I looking? Uh, lucky man. Sorry, is that the dreaded phone call? My daughter just passed. Got to run. What? Shit. Sorry to hear that, lucky man. I'm not sure if I've read that right. Uh, David, I'm doing Mike's screen cleaning video next week. Yeah. Alrighty says, I have to like my Arzopa portable monitor. Much easier to work with, and they have a small kickstand. I think the um, I think a kickstand is actually a great idea. I liked I used to lo really love using my Microsoft Surface, which obviously most of you probably have seen that previously. Can somebody rewind? The oh, can somebody rewind the stream and see how this actually went? Was it there? No. Is it there? No. Nope. Oh, there we go. Hey, that was it. I remember now. I think once you've done this a few times, it would be like second nature. Yeah. <laughs> oh, old lucky man. That's a. Oh, I'm bummed out about that. That's. If, if I've read that right, hopefully 
he meant pissed or something, not passed. Either way is, oh God. What do you say to something like that? You, there's not a lot you can say. Well, we're thinking of you, buddy. Tell William, I'm not sure. William, uh, William, no. Um, well, norm, past normally means as in like, gone. Like yeah. Work it yeah, definitely. This be all right, it? portable monitors are I can see it now. Yeah, it's good, I can see it. Yeah, if you uh cool blimey. I'm gonna turn that other light off, it's cheaper. Isn't the world of HD? Yeah. Sometimes. Oh. oh now you've got your glasses on. No, I I can actually see things now. I can see clearly now the Windex has cleaned my screen. Got to try and put this all back in here in the right way. Blake says, are you copying Jay's? No, I actually, I started wearing my glasses on uh, streams and videos ages and ages and ages oh, ago. We did some stupid ones, didn't we? I, I did some ones life of, um, yeah, life hacks. How to get black marker pen out of your white leather chair. I got absolutely pissed right up on a Sunday and started recording all these kind of daft videos on how to get stuff, how to using get stains. White so using white vinegar to get the uh, bicarb soda. Uh, does WD-40 get black ink out of white leather? Let's find out. Went there with a Sharpie on my leather chair. Just goes to show kids Nick don't drink. Crime watch. <laughs> Thanks for that. Oh, I've put the cover on around the wrong way. I'll get over it. This Surgical spirits. We didn't try that, did we? Surgical spirit. We didn't think we had any. Good old MSI, they like to send things that will never get broken. I can't believe the motherboard's on re is reduced now. Mickey thinks, Mickey <laughs> Don't you, Dave? More with your glasses on, but you'd be more fun non glasses in the pub. <laughs> <laughs> You've never seen me in a pub. Actually, most people have never seen me in a pub. I very rarely go to a pub. I think the last time I went to a pub was. Christmas? Yeah, I'm, I'm birthday, wasn't it? Oh yeah, went to the Sandringham, didn't we? That was really nice. It was actually, yeah. Yeah, if, uh, if any of you ever come down to visit, come down to Bristol and visit, uh, we'll take you out to the Sandringham pub. It's, uh, they do some cracking food in there, and it's actually, it's a really nice little, little place. And it's, we're, Budget friendly. My, uh, my dad lived in the, one of the shops, or above one of the shops, opposite when he was young very young and uh i didn't know this until many 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 years later and uh when i was kind of school age we used to go down there and hang out and just go on our skateboards up and down there so it's like kind of weird how my dad lived there many years ago i never knew him at all really and uh yeah it just seemed weird that i used to skateboard basically outside my dad's house but mum and dad split up when I was very young, so yeah, it's just a, a weird thing. Uh, they dodged the Vespa on the way home. It's the wrong season. They only use them in the summer here. What's the thing for getting up tabs which you've closed? There we are. Shift, shift, control and T brings yeah. up your tabs. Okay. If you accidentally close your tabs, that's the one you want to do. I can only do it by muscle memory, not knowing what the keys are. Oh. Do you know what? I might have to get my eyes lasered or something because this is actually pretty cool. I can actually see stuff. I look like a complete plank now. <laughs> right, let's have a look at some questions. Um, a letter. Last time I went into a pub, I got into a fight and spent three days in jail. I remember that happening. I remember you telling us about that. 
Ugly Bob, can we play Dodge the Vespa on the way home? You certainly can. Mike's expert reboxing. I have got very good at reboxing. It's actually a very difficult thing to do. I think my uh, many years in retail and uh, working in the prop store for, at the BBC is very handy for being able to rebox and repackage things. Uh, William Bodie says, Back to the Future, Gerald Strickland is back. <laughs> Slackers! That countdown, was it for the power bank? Uh, says Wild Bill. No, I don't know. The countdown, it said it's an alarm. So I'm guessing. Actually, I don't even know. I'm not even going to guess. I don't know what it's for. I'm going to have to look in the MSI manual and see what that was supposed to be about. Is that your latest glasses? They don't look as oh, yeah. thick as. No, these are, my, yeah, these are my newest ones. I've got another set of idea. The Caterpillars. They're a bit less plasticky, aren't they? Actually, yeah, where's my, I'll get my other glasses, because these ones are awful. Actually, I don't even know if they're in here. Oh, no, they're in my, oh, yeah, they are. I don't know why I've got them in here. They should be, really, in my, uh, in my work bag. These are, this is the first pair of glasses I ever owned. You should have gone to Specsavers. We did. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first ones I bought. Actually, those are much better. Yeah, those are clearer. It was weird. I, bought, I had these the first time after having my eyes tested for the very first time. Since school. Since school, yeah. And I got these, and then I had them tested again. They said, oh, you need a new one. So I went with these. And these are awful. I can barely see anything out of them. But that is a little bit sharper. Actually, it's quite a bit sharper. My left eye's knackered, but my right eye's all right. There we go. Stuart Cleary says, glasses are so cheap now, I leave them all over the house. Did you steal Gordon's glasses? <laughs> uh, Stuart Cleary says, they look better too. While Bill says, liking the red in the rig behind you? Cool. Uh, are these prescription glasses or cheater glasses? Now these are prescription, these ones are about 300 quid, weren't they? Something stupid. Uh, because I had like all the different eye. lenses, didn't I? Because so I had the anti-green tint. Did you have all uh, that? Yeah. Oh no, I have just the real basic. Shape. Those were the cheapy ones. They're like. Free. Did you get sunglasses? Free. No. I got free sunglasses, but I don't wear sunglasses because they damage your eyes. Got to see the sun. Test. Wear glasses to see beautiful pattern. There's no beautiful pattern, are you morons? Daisy, chuck that in her box. Oh, sorry. Let's put those away. I'm never going to use those again. O'Reilly's off to bed. <laughs> Good night, O'Reilly. Bless you for your super chats. These are weird. They're, they're, they're better glasses, but they just don't fit very well at all. And I think I went back a few times and actually got them to uh, redo them. But Actually, I've just bent the arms a bit. That feels better. You don't want to fall off now. Uh, while Bill says, when you have your eyes tested, you have to tell them the distance you are from the screen. Um, the last time that I had my eyes tested was, best, was it maybe 10 years ago almost. Probably was about 10 years ago. It must be knocking on that now. And my eyes haven't changed in 10 years, so um, I probably won't so bother. Expensive here. I've worn my friend's prescription glasses for years because I couldn't afford any. <laughs> and the next time I went to the opticians, they were exactly the same as the time before I went. David Underhill says, my laser surgery should have been 12,000 Australian dollars, but my great Aussie government paid for them 100%. Happy days. I have no idea how much it'll be over. There's a weird bit where there's a, a like a, a ridge at the bottom of the glasses and it catches the light and it diffracts. It's really off-putting. And there's like a, a like a blur along there. Which I think it's probably why I didn't like wearing them. But yeah, I do I do prefer these glasses in general. But I don't really like using them. Um, 
Right, I think that is, uh, I think that's pretty much going to bring things to an end. I don't think there's anything else I can discuss about my own personal life or my skateboarding history <laughs> or my glasses wearing abilities. <clears throat> and, my, and I think my throat is beginning to start to go. Right, yeah, I think that is going to be a pretty much it. Currently we have 66 concurrent viewers and a chat rate of 6, so that's 60, 66. Very demonic. Time to go out with a, uh, <laughs> a, a pang. Yeah. Oh, 67, eh? Oh, 70 concurrent viewers. It's going back up oh, now. Twig hikers, only got eight. Just got eight. Twig hikers. Oh, no. Never mind. I do apologise. We'll, um, we'll be doing a build, obviously, for the, the new AM5 rig in the coming... I'm hope I want well I don't think I'll get to do it tomorrow maybe Monday if there's a way that I can do a live stream and do the build at the same time I will try and do that because I think people will want to see that rather than me film it and it be kind of all over the place and Calf's not going to want to film that because it's just a horrendous job to film so we'll see uh, see what we can do there there's a last minute super chat come in from Stuart Cleary bless you Stuart says, thanks, Mike and Kath. Have a good night. No worries. Uh, David Aiken says, good night all, and enjoy the GPU mic. I will. I'm... Uh... Oh, where's my mouse? There it is. Oh, clicked on the wrong one. Uh, yeah, the GPU is a very... That's thrown me a real curveball on what my plans were. It really genuinely has. Because I'm now thinking that... I would like to have my AM5 and the graphics card in my edit editing rig. But then that means all kinds of kerfuffle. So I'm not going to sleep very well tonight thinking about how this is all going to plan out. Because it's going to be the old usual upgrade this bit, move that bit, move that bit to there, move that bit to there, move that bit to there, reinstall Windows, relicense Windows. It's going to be a pain. Anyway, thank you all for uh, taking part. Hopefully you've all had an enjoyable Saturday evening. If you have, smash that like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the channel notification to be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Bespectacled Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.